debate, no debate. I'll put the motion, all those in favour. Uh, Councillor Norman, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Allgate, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor um, Adams and Mayor Turley. Thank you, councillors. Uh, a call for item six, disclosure of interest, for which there is none. Thank you, councillors. Um, item seven is a mayoral minute. It is in confidential. And so we'll deal with that when we get to the confidential section. Item eight, item, uh, section eight, item one, notice of which notice have been given, uh, slash uh, one slash 21, page 16. Councillor Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move uh, one, two and three and four as written. I'll take each one, Councillor, as a notice of motions. Uh, oh, you're talking about that. Okay, one, thank you. One, two, three, four in the notice of motion. So number one, that motion of notice has been given uh, one, two, three, be received that council, that Broken Hill City Council develop a policy to address the tree, dead trees in and around Broken Hill and save sick and dying trees. That a report be repaired outlining the cost to removal of dead trees and replace them with a species of tree chosen by the council on consultation with the community that council consider requesting quotes <laughs> from rem for the removal of dead trees and that the trees can be used by the contractor for the sale of firewood. Madam Mayor, I'd like to move an amendment. I just need a seconder first. Seconded. Seconder, Council Allgate. What's your amendment, uh, I really get the opportunity to speak to my motion before uh, people have the right to uh, move amendments. Um, not sure about the timing well, of amendments. You, you, I'll you take do, it though, Councillor Kennedy. Because as the mover, you get the right to speak yeah, to a motion, I, otherwise sorry, you Council, don't I, have a notice of motion. I was making a ruling, um, Councillor Kennedy, I'm happy for you to speak to the motion, then I'll take Councillor Page's amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I move this motion because it's become apparent, and it, I'm sure it'd be apparent to everyone in this room that there are many dead and dying trees around Broken Hill. For example, on the airport road, Councillor Allgate uh, counted 20 dead trees today. Uh, that in, doesn't include the ones that are dying. Uh, if something had been done about this when I first brought this up about eight to 12 months ago, some of those trees may have survived. We now have 20 that are dead and more that are dying. In Air Street, it's even worse, the amount of dying trees. There are dying trees coming in from Williams, Williams Street, Rackow Street into town. There's dying trees on the Tipperborough Road. There's dying trees that's on the Silverton Road. There are dying trees all around Broken Hill. It's gone from being unsightly to now being dangerous. We have branches falling, we have significant trees uh, falling. We have a tree out in Air Street that now is pushed up against a fence, have fell down in strong winds. It's only a matter of time before someone's killed in Broken Hill because of a lack of, a lack of maintenance from the Broken Hill City Council when dealing with dead trees. It, it has been utterly disappointing for me as a councillor, and I'm sure it's very disappointing for the community that councils allowed our trees to get to this state without doing anything about it. We now are talking about some sort of plan in April this year that will address tree management, risk management, tree inspection, tree selection, guidelines, etc. Why have we waited to April of this year? Is it something to do with an election year? I don't know, but what happened in the last four years? Council can't just do things in election year and expect the community to be happy with it. People shouldn't have to wait until there's an election call so that we have dead and dying trees in our city removed before council does something uh, to protect the community. It's not acceptable and as councillors, we need to do better. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Page, what's your amendment? Yes, Madam Mayor, on item four, I think it's very appropriate that this council employs local uh, council, council people to do the job. So I feel very confident that our workforce, take out the word contractor and put in our workforce actually do this job. Uh, they're very skilled people and I think they're capable of doing it. And uh, they can follow up with the planting of the uh, 
the tree that will tolerate the drought conditions here in Broken Hill to continue to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on trees like we've done in the past. Most of those trees, 90% of those, or even a bit more, have actually died. So let's, uh, Councillor Kennedy saying to uh, plant a tree that's appropriate, and I agree. So uh, I'd like to see that one change. Uh, and it shows our employees that we care about them having a job. So, Madam Mayor, that's the one change I'd like to see change. Okay. Uh, um, Councillor, so it's one, two, three, item four, um, remove contractor and put in council. Yes, please, Madam Mayor. Okay, do you have a seconder? Happy, I'll second that one. happy to accept it as an addendum if uh, Councillor Page uh, adds, the, adds the word immediately. Yes, Madam Mayor, I'll accept that. Madam Mayor. Happy to accept yeah, sorry, that as an Councillor addendum. Then. Brown. Could I foreshadow a further amendment? Yes, thank you, Councillor Brown. So you're withdrawing your amendment. I'm adding uh, Councillor No, I'm sorry, Page's Councillor Kennedy. Just let me ask Councillor Page. Are you withdrawing your amendment? Are you moving this? No, I've already moved it and you've already... Accepted it. Yeah, yes, so Madam Mayor, so, it's... Uh, but the, the, my, my intent was, yes, for our employees to do the job now, not 12 months time now. Okay. And that's why I'm happy with Thank Councillor you. Kennedy's Councillor Gallagher, pr you're seconding that? I'll second that. Point of order, Madam Mayor. Councillor? As a mover of motion, I can accept an addendum to my motion. And if, Councillor... the, and, if, and if the councillor that has moved the amendment, is happy to add it to the original motion, then it becomes the original motion. Council There's no need to vote for an amendment. Councillor, Councillor uh, Page has indicated he wants to move this as an amendment. That's true. Yeah. So you don't want to put it to the addendum? No, Councillor, no. sorry, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Page, go through the chair. The ruling is Councillor Page is moving this as an amendment, and so it's his amendment. So I'll speak you. against the amendment then. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Page, do you want to speak to your motion? I've already made it very clear, Madam Mayor, and it's a common sense change and it should be adopted and supported because that's what we're here for, to work together for good outcomes. And that with our local workforce doing that job, that, that should apply to everything we consider in this chamber. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kennedy, are you going to speak against Yeah, any? quite happy to give five minutes every time someone wants to move an amendment to try and take some sort of credit that, for something that should have been done a long time ago. More than happy. Um, so I'm quite happy to have 20 minutes after Councillor Brown moves her amendment. I can speak all night and to write a reply because it is important uh, what is happening with the trees. It's important. People, people I don't know about, I don't know about other councillors, but... Um, I know Councillor Allgate regularly has people come to him to talk about dying dead trees. I probably hear from, I don't know, probably at least 15 people a week about what's going on in our city as far as dead trees go. As far as Councillor uh, Page's uh, amendment, I think the Broken Hill, uh, Broken Hill City Council workforce would be more than capable of doing the job and should be doing the job. What many of us would know, and it doesn't take much to know, the problem with our Broken Hill City Council workforce is there's no one there to do the job. Over this so-called COVID time, what's actually happened in this amount of time is we don't have the people to do the work. Once upon a time, those trees were maintained and they were maintained by the Broken Hill workforce. The reason our trees are not being maintained at the, at the moment is because council does not employ enough people to do the jobs that are required. We continue to pay rates as ratepayers of this city. The services provided by council, even though they're getting more money than they've ever got, have continued to go downhill. So agree totally with uh, Councillor Page's amendment. As I said earlier, the part that needs to be needed to be added to Councillor Page's amendment is that council workforce immediately do it and the management of council make sure that we have enough people to do that work immediately, not in April, but now. We need to make sure that any trees that are still alive are kept alive and any dead trees that need to be removed be removed immediately before those trees break off and kill someone in this town. 
because it's only a matter of time before one of the dead trees around town causes a significant injury to either property or people. And so even though I'm not totally opposed to Councillor Page's amendment, I think that it needed to have immediate added to it. And what is apparently clear and abundantly clear, probably to everyone in this room, we don't have the workforce to carry it out. Thank you, Councillor. No further speakers for the motion? Councillor Brown. No, she's a foreshadowed. So no further speakers for the amendment? Okay, I'll put uh, Councillor Page's amendment. All those in favour? Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher, against? Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Allgate, Councillor Adams. We'll now move to Councillor... Sorry, councillors. Uh, councillors, we're in the council meeting. Councillor Brown's... Councillor Brown's uh, foreshadow motion I, amendment. Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to move the uh, part one there, a uh, motion uh, of which notice has been given, etc., be received, and uh, add an additional part two or an alternative part two uh, defer that that uh, council defer further consideration of this matter pending presentation of council's tree management policy to the next meeting of council. Do you have a seconder? I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Adams. Councillor Brown, do you want to speak? I. Uh, Yes, Madam Mayor, as uh, the uh, comment um, by the Acting General Manager makes clear, a lot of time and effort has gone into the formulation of a tree management policy. I know that the um, Council has used the services of um, um, arborists and people who are um, have specialist knowledge of uh, the uh, uh, trees of this region to make recommendations as to the most appropriate trees that council will use. We've already adopted the um, uh, a policy that every tree will be replaced by two trees. I know it's it's um, somewhat um, uh, frustrating that these processes take uh, take quite a long time to do properly, but uh, it's no way to deal with. Uh, um, a situation um, such as we're in at the end of the most catastrophic drought this century, which is the reason why the trees are dying. If, if council were to uh, keep the dying trees um, uh, alive, uh, um, council would have to spend its entire budget buying water tankers and buying water to do that. Because the fact is that the trees um, don't depend on council watering, they are dependent on uh, water from the water table and the drought has has diminished um, access uh, to that supply. So nothing anyone could do could keep those those trees alive. Um, uh, I believe that um, dealing with situations by demanding you know uh, an immediate increase in the workforce such as uh, uh, seems to have been, uh, suggested is just not practicable. It's just not feasible and able to be done. To say that you can't expand council's workforce immediately by employing a dozen people next week without any consideration of the cost. Um, it's part of our a code of meeting practice that any notice of motion um, deals with the, the the budgetary impact of 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 what's suggested. This I don't I don't see any consideration of that. Um, in, in this notice of motion, I suspect that if you were to do as has been suggested, the cost would be totally beyond our capacity to pay. Madam, Madam Thank Mayor. You. Speaking against? Yes, yes, yes Madam Mayor. Yes. Page. The, uh, we, uh, we need to uh, understand this is a safety issue. If those trees, and I don't doubt any day, some of those trees could and will fall over, the fact that we now have spoken about this issue, if anyone's injured, this council becomes liable. Those trees have to be removed for a safety reason. If we're going to wait for, for reports and outcomes, uh, and in the meantime, 
I can assure you some of those trees will fall over. So I think the, as far as removing the dead trees, the sooner the better. I have a question, um, sorry, Madam Mayor. Can, can I just ask the General Manager, <clears throat> Mr General Manager, are we removing trees currently uh, with the assessment? Um, what is happening currently about people uh, contacting council, talking about their trees? This isn't slowing that process down, that's still happening, is that correct? Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, that's correct. So at, at the moment, um, council adopted an enterprise risk management plan, which deals exactly with this matter. So when we are aware of um, dead and dying trees, either being alerted by the community or through our workforce, it's under our uh, risk assessments undertaken uh, by our team and in consultation with an, a professional arborist. And we remove um, any of the risks, whether it's removal of a limb or the entire tree, but every single tree um, that is reported to us, we do do a risk assessment on. Can I make a comment there, Madam Mayor? Um, no, sorry, at this stage, I just need to go for a speaker for. So we need to do speakers for and speakers against. We have to do the meeting procedures. Is there a speaker for the amendment? If I could ask a, a question. Are you speaking? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm just going to go back to Councillor Allgate. Are you asking a question, Councillor Allgate? Comment, Madam Chair, about uh, what the general man acting general manager has just said about the removal of trees. If you request the removal, you know that the council's workforce is basically uh, it puts it on its priority list and, and eventually gets around to it. That that uh, may be the case, but I had, um, without request, the council removed one of the trees on the nature strip in front of my premises going back two and a half years ago. I've asked three times, twice by email to the general manager, the, the former general manager, and once from the floor of the council to have the stump removed and nothing has happened. And yet the tree that fell over 20 metres away on, on pots and plants uh, car park site was tended to within a few days and then a few days after the stump muncher come down and they got rid of the stump. My, well, it's not mine, it's the council's stump, which sticks out of the ground about 18 inches, you know, about 400 mils. It, they, the council painted it white, asking somebody to fall over it, trip over it in, at night. It's still there. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Allgate. You captured that. Um, I, okay. I just need to go through councillors. Yeah. Um, is your councillor Clark, your question is around you need further information clarification? Yes. Sorry, yes. Um, I would like some clarification around the, the tree management plan. Um, firstly, um, as the general manager has stated, this tree management plan has already started by the sound of things if trees are being removed and dangerous limbs are being removed. Um, otherwise, if that's not the case, um, when can we see this tree management plan actually begin? Uh, Mr General Manager. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, yeah, certainly are doing aspects of the tree management plan, obviously through a risk assessment basis. Um, but yeah, as per a lot of our asset management plans, they're not complete or not finished. And that's what we're working through. This is essentially an asset management plan and we will um, make, make, it a, make it a priority, which we already have to obviously get it completed. And that just steps out and formalizes the process of how we deal with our trees within the city, um, gives, gives a long-term view on it. Right, so we're not waiting until um, we, we're not waiting until April council meeting to start this. April council meeting will be um, expected for us to uh, adopt. Is that right? So, my just a clarification is that the normal practice is in place for tree assessments. Um, we note, as councillors have said, there's been a massive drought, so there is a lot of trees out there. I think. We have quite a significant number, but the tree management plan is like our asset management plan. It's a different process. We're already doing the tree removal and then the tree management plan will come in. I couldn't recall last year and Mr. Acting General Manager um, probably gives some more information about how the, um, how the um, arborist came and there was a whole committee went around and looked at trees. So this has been a priority for the council 
Um, it's just, it's a, it's quite a massive program. Okay, is there a speaker for yes, the motion? Madam Thank you, Councillor Norman. Uh, I'd like to speak to um, <coughs> Councillor Brown's amendment in so much as we are currently removing trees or trimming trees that present a risk under the emergency management plan as developed and presented to the Audit and Risk Improvement Committee. Um, hence, what Councillor Brown seems to be asking is obviously point one as written, but point two, um, await a presentation of the Council's tree management plan, which is obviously currently still being developed um, and then present that to council the earliest opportunity, preferably, as the motion says, um, next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Speakers against? Yes, Madam Chair. Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, I think some of the councillors, some of the present councillors who were on the previous councils would, would be well aware that we've had reports from arborists before, uh, at least two that I can recall. And uh, they should be able to be accessed. The council should have them in its records system. They, at the time, gave information about the, the things that should be done. And for Councillor Brown to say that the council, and I assume she means anybody, can't save a dying tree, I think is absurd. Yes, it is very, very difficult to do as many that we're talking about, because you're talking about hundreds of trees now. You know, we're not talking about just a handful, we're talking about hundreds of trees. And I accept that to do, a, to do several hundred would be impossible. But to say, to, to, to accept the principle that nobody can save a tree is ridiculous in the extreme, as far as I'm concerned. We've been told in the past that you can build troughs around the trees, and you can drill down holes uh, at least a metre, and if they're watered regularly, those trees will come back. This is mature trees, gum trees, river gums, uh, spathulatas, you name them. Now, we've been given that information, and yet the Labor Party, again, are deferring it, deferring it, which they often do with these things, particularly Councillor Kennedy's notice of the motion, for another few months. Okay, in April, the, the plan is going to be developed. How long before after April will the plan be implemented? And will we have the resources or the funding to do what is needed then? And I probably think we won't have. Thank you, Councillor. Any further speakers for? No, I'll um, put. Yes, I'm spe I'll oh, speak I'm for. Um, sorry, Councillor Clark. You can have, you can have as more. As it's only when you move. You could. Did you move a motion? To the motion be put? No. Well, that's what you do if you want the motion to be put. Otherwise, you have another speaker for. Yeah. So, um, I think that what we've got in Broken Hill at the moment is a terrible situation. After we've had this drought, um, the trees have obviously died not because council has gone about killing them, but because the drought has killed them. Council has done its best, I think, to keep a lot of the trees that we have alive actually thriving. It is amazing. I know we're talking about dead trees, but you can see as many more live trees and you can see them flourishing. Um, I think that uh, the point that I was trying to make earlier was we have already started this work. We have already started to remove dead trees. And this seems to have been the prime uh, point that Councillor Kennedy was making at the very beginning when he was speaking. He was talking about dead trees and nobody removing them and how they had to be removed immediately. They Apparently, they are being removed. We await the tree management plan because that is going to give us an idea of the types of trees that are going to replace those. This I think is a very important point. And I think that this is something that is being overlooked here in this very emotive kind of presentation. 
We do not want to see dead trees, no. Yes, they are dangerous. And yes, council is removing them. Thank you. Speakers for? Uh, well, that the was for, again. but as the mover of motion, I'd like to speak to the amendment. No, you haven't spoken already, Councillor. You can do Not that. Not to this amendment. No, I haven't. I find some of the arguments that I've heard, as Councillor Allgate just said, a little absurd. Uh, for Councillor Clark, councils always cut down trees. If you think that council doesn't cut down trees at all, then I don't know what council you've been on. But if you look around town, there's hundreds of dead trees. This isn't, there's hundreds of dead trees. Can I speak without being interrupted, Good. Madam Mayor? There is hundreds of dead trees. Councillor Brown said it would cost our entire budget to water the trees. Our budget's about $30 million. That's 30 gigalitres of water. That's a lot of water, Councillor Brown. But to put it in perspective, one megalitre costs $1,000. That's a million litres of water. If we gave each tree a thousand litres per day, a thousand trees, that's a million litres or a thousand dollars. I don't know where the councillor come up with our entire budget, $30 million for 30 gigalitres of, of water. We only lose five, use five gigalitres for the whole town. 30 gigalitres. Is this all I can say is I hope people are watching this podcast and hearing what some of the councillors are saying. And I'm glad it's an election year. I'm glad in September, the community get the opportunity to decide who's right and wrong on these issues because $30 million to water trees. I don't know what councillor Brown is talking about. I've got 30 trees in my yard and not one of them's dead. Amazing what a little bit of water with a hose does to these trees. Worst drought never, not one dead tree in my yard. 2005. Council moved a motion to replace all trees with new trees that would, that was 16 years ago. Defer, defer to next, next meeting, Councillor Brown says. Well, it's been deferred since 2005 that I know of. It was deferred from 12 months ago when I first brought it up. This seems to be a council, a particularly council, Labor Council of defer, 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 no action, dead tree, dead tree, dead tree. We talk about the worst drought as another little furphy people do. 2002, we had a drought, which was the millennial drought, which was considered the worst drought. Worse than this drought, but still can, this drought may be bad, but not as bad as the millennial drought. About seven or eight years ago, 600, kilo, 600 millilitres of water three years in a row Broken Hill got. Some people might remember that the Thomas Street Road had to be replaced because the water table had lifted so much. Come on, if people think that it's only the drought that's killing trees and not a lack of maintenance, then they're sadly mistaken. How do they reckon every other place in Australia keeps their trees alive when it's dry? They water them or they get enough rain. If you don't get enough rain in your yard, your grass will die. What do you do to your grass? You water it. I can tell you right now, no tree needs a thousand litres of water a day. Most of them get by on 15, 20 litres. So we could, we could work water 30 or 40,000 trees a day for $1,000 for the water. Where the cost comes in is actually employment to do that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Um, no further speakers. I'll put the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment. Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, uh, Councillor Adams, Mayor Chirley, all those against. Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page, Councillor um, Gallagher. The amendment becomes the motion. Um, oh, Councillor Kennedy, do you want to write a reply? Uh, if no, if there's no further speakers, Madam Mayor, I certainly I would. I don't think there would be. Is there any further speakers? No. Would you like a right of reply? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, all I'd like to say, and I'll keep it relatively brief because I have said a lot. I appreciate the support of Dave Gallagher, Ron Page and Bob Allgate in this attempt to 
save trees in Broken Hill, potentially save lives and property, to have the town look nice, to spend money trying in an attempt to have the town look nice. I'm disappointed that the councillors that voted against it voted against it to defer, to defer doing anything. That's what defer means. So we defer it to next meeting, then we defer it for whatever, I don't know. But defer means take no action. So I say now, I'm very disappointed that the six councillors here tonight that voted against the motion voted to take no action. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. I'll put the motion, all those in favour, Councillor Norman, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, uh, Councillor Allgate, Mayor Turley, against Councillor Allgate, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher. Motion is passed. Thank you, everyone. We'll move to item two, motion, uh, motion of which notice has been given, report number two slash 21, page 19. Councillor Kennedy. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'll move uh, one and two. Paragraphs one and two. Seconded. Thank you. Would you like to speak to the motion? Thank Council? you, Madam Mayor. Uh, as everyone that lives in Broken Hill knows, the importance of not having water restrictions goes in hand in hand with the motion that was put previously. We must, as a community that's so dry, have the opportunity to water in hours that our workforce are employed. It's not a good good way to be when we're told we can't water during daylight hours when the vast majority of council employees work during daylight hours. So we need to send this correspondence off to Essential Water and the minister and the local member to find out why we are still on water restrictions given the fact that the cut the State government just spent $500 million to get water directly from the Murray via Wentworth uh, Weir Pool. If we do not do this, we're going to end up and continue to have areas that dry out. The soccer over, for example, uh, at the moment is underwater, has had plenty of money and was looking nice, but all of a sudden there wasn't enough water and it's starting to dry out, same as the Norm Fox Oval. We need to ensure firstly, that all our sporting grounds are adequately watered so that we can keep, keep people in town. When we try to get these building inspectors or whatever to be employed in Broken Hill and come to Broken Hill to do the backlog of construction certificates, the first thing they look at is how the town looks, dead trees, dead ovals. A lot of that can be attributed to water restrictions. We need to put pressure on the state government to ensure that water restrictions are lifted immediately. People should keep in mind that the water is, what the water restrictions do is allow essential water not to turn on their third pump, which costs them money or costs the state government money because they don't pay it, the state government's paying it. The third pump delivers the extra additional megalitres per day that the community needs to not be on water restrictions. And you can bet that it's getting broken ill people accustomed to the fact that you will be on water restrictions when mines and toxic waste dumps open out on the Wentworth Road and start using that water ahead of us. So we need to tell the state government now we are not putting up with it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Madam Mayor, can I'm I please, move an amendment sorry, to that? No. Um, can I please just say that... Um, I've had uh, contact from Essential uh, Water today to say that they are lifting the um, lifting the water restrictions and the media release should have gone out today. Um, so this is good news. Um, any speakers against? Not. How, how come Councillor Page is not allowed to move an amendment? Oh, you're moving an amendment. That's what I asked oh, you, Madam sorry, Mayor. Councillor, I thought you said, can I speak to that? No, Madam Mayor. What's your amendment, My Councillor? amendment is the uh, minister, our federal minister for local government should be notified as well. So I'd like to include him in the correspondence. He's our, he's our member federally 
and uh, it's very inappropriate that we should be on water restrictions and he should play a part in uh, what's going to happen in the future in regard to our water supply. Happy to add it. Councillor Page, are you still wanting to move that as... No, Councillor Page, Sorry. are you still wanting to move that as your amendment or do you want Councillor Kennedy to include it in his? Yes, I'm, I'm happy to accept that, the uh, Councillor Kennedy's proposal. So Councillor Kennedy will include yep. the Minister. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So we'll add that, um, that will include um, writing to the Minister for um, our state, our federal minister, our federal member. Yeah, federal member. Uh, just a question, Madam Mayor. Didn't you just read out some correspondence to say the restrictions have been lifted? Um, yes. I've just announced that I was informed late this afternoon that restrictions are being lifted. Right. Madam Mayor, can I make a comment? It's very inappropriate due to the pipeline the fact that we're being subjected to water restrictions over a time frame, and that's why we want to make it clear that it doesn't happen again. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Kennedy. Uh, so is everyone? There's no discussion. We'll put the motion. Uh, I'll write a, write a reply. There's nothing to write a reply. There, oh. there was people talking. There was also an, an amendment move that went to become part of the motion. Okay. There's been discussion held. Thank you, Councillor. Um, what I'd like to say is it's amazing what, it really is amazing what a notice of motion can do as far as put pressure on public bodies to ensure that water restrictions are removed. One thing before the Broken Hill City Council, suddenly essential water's removing the restrictions. This is why the correspondence needs to continue to go to where it's going so they get told by the minister and the local member not to do it again. Thank you, Council. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, I can't see Councillor. Um, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Page, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley. Thank you. We'll move to that motion's carried. We'll move to item three, uh, report number three slash 21. Page 21. Councillor thank, Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll re, uh, move the five paragraphs in the notice of motion. Thank you. Thank you. Seconder. Second that. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy, do you want to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. But I'd just like to ask a question of uh, you, the Mayor, and if you need to pass it on, um, whatever. Uh, are cats included as part of the Companion Animals Act. Uh, Mr. I have heard, uh, uh, oh, I'll just Sorry. elaborate on the question. I've heard a number of people uh, been told and council tells them regularly that cats are ferals and strays and they're not counted. Uh, Mr. Acting General Manager. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Cats are a part of the Companion Animals Act. What, uh, what we uh, tell people is there's no definition of uh, feral cats in the Companion Animals Act. So, and people cannot um, cannot uh, take them to the pound for either seizure or um, handing in. Through you, Madam Mayor, um, they they can, but we need it. It needs to be the owner that takes them in. I think you could respectfully clarify that, Councillor. No, but go ahead. When someone's wrong, that's not disrespectful. That's pointing out that someone's wrong. Respectfully, not disrespectfully. No, you would never do that. No, actually, I wouldn't, Madam no. Mayor, because I'm quite respectful of people. I wish some people were as respectful of me as I am with them. Hope people are watching that. I think the camera's that way. Well, well, I'm talking into the microphone. I don't have to look at them. I move this notice of motion because 
Many people have contacted me about cats and trying to hand cats in for uh, protection, whatever. Council took over the over the pound off of Tabby, who took cats and took dogs at a very little cost to the Broken Hill community. We're now looking at 500,000 to provide the same service that the local vet, uh, the local vet actually provided to the community, which I said a number of times in this council meeting that there's no way council could provide the same service for the same amount of money. Many people, and the acting general manager can frown, um, but we lucky they're on tape and that. When I said we wouldn't be able to do it and I was given one lot of figures after another and I said, how much is it going to cost to administer this? We were told time and time again, it would be no more expensive than what Tabby was charging. Lucky it's all on record. Lucky it was taped. So that's there for us all to see. We now are told to provide a service that Tabby provided, we're looking at 500 odd thousand dollars in the report. Tabby took animals, dogs, cats, everything after hours, during hours, ringing up. One of the complaints he had was that the RSPCA was meant to take in turns on weekends to pick up stray dogs, stray cats. They never honoured their part, but he, he continued to do. Council not only should provide a 24 hour service, but in some, some respects, they are and probably will have to do, do a deal with the RSPCA or Tabby again to fulfill their obligations under the Companion Animals Act. We, have we got internet here? Yeah. Uh, hang on. Just uh, getting the Wi-Fi not connected. Mr. General Manager, while we're... Uh, no, no, it's all right. I'll continue Sorry. on speaking. I'll just wait till you finish this debate. Yep. Mm. Uh, the Companion Animals Act. The Companion Animals Act means each of the following, a dog, a cat, and any other animal that is prescribed by the regulations as a companion animal. 62 of the Companion Animals Act. Procedures for dealing with seized or surrendered animals. A seized animal must be delivered to an owner, council or pound of approved premises. That means as a person, you can pick up, you can seize a seized animal is any animal that is not surrendered by the owner. So a seized animal can be either by a council ranger or any other person that seizes the animal when it is in breach of section 13, section 14, section 18, section 22, section 30, section 32, section 36, section 52, section 57, section 58B. Section 30. Cats prohibited in some public places. That means all cats, not cats that are feral, not cats that are this, not cats that are that, but cats. Cats are pro prohibited in the following places. A public space or a public place that is within 10 million of brass of public place, so any public place virtually, uh, local set aside for local authority. If the cat is in the place uh, prohibited, the owner of the cat, it can only be approached by a council officer who has delegated the authority. If the cat is not with the owner, any person, including an authorised officer, may seize that cat that is in place in which cats are prohibited under this section for the cat's owner. If the owner is president, the owner cannot. That cat is not prohibited under the section blah, blah, blah. It must be taken to an authorised station, which could be the RSPCA or the dot or 30 Tabby, seconds council, which is no longer an authorised station, but it must immediately be taken out to the dog pound. People, any one of a, any person in this room or any member of the community have a right to pick up a cat when it's in a public place and take it out to have it seized and taken to the pound where the pound must then try and find the owner if it's microchipped or whatever. 
So, and that goes the same for dogs. So council's not meeting its obligations under the act because when people seize a dog, when it's in public property, we have nowhere to take it. And Thank we have no, we actually can be fined 30 councillor. penalty points for keeping it. Thank you, councillor. Your debate time's up. Um, Mr. General Manager, did you want to make comment? No, it's okay, Madam Mayor. Okay. Councillor, I was just going to yeah, say Councillor Kennedy was correct from uh, before, so he's done that now. Thank you. Any speakers against? Uh, Councillor Lacour? Madam Mayor. Thank you, General Manager. Yes, Mr. Lacour, Councillor Lacour. Okay. Um, Councillor, there's no. Oh, you're moving an amendment. Sorry, what's your amendment, Councillor? My That's your amendment. Councillor, do you have a seconder for the amendment? Yes, Madam Mayor. Councillor Norman, sorry. Uh, Councillor Cool, would you like to speak to your amendment? Yes, Madam Mayor, what's the same? The report can be filed. I've read with Councillor Kennedy on that. And uh, looking at the matter, we let's get all the facts, what our obligations are. And I know at our briefing on Monday that. Uh, some of the questions that the asked the briefing facts were provided. So those facts probably was informed as well as being updated. And that report should form a basis for investigating the disturbance and accidents in this area. Let's get the information, let's get the report. Um, there is an after hour hotline and it's been used and we've seen that information that was provided by the uh, general manager of the briefing. We've adopted a companion animal management plan in February 2020. We'll see what the report has to say to confirm we get our obligation. Uh, responsible pet ownership. Now that's crucial. We've got to keep pushing that message. Now, one thing uh, off lease areas. So that's going to be covered up, covered in our upcoming asset management plan. And there may be scope at that time to investigate more of these areas. I was walking in the park and I saw our ranger approach a person who had two dogs off their leash in the park. And he politely asked that man to put that, uh, those dogs back on the leash. And that gentleman said, Well, it'd be okay if council provide us the more of these areas. Are they going to do that? So that's an issue that this council needs to look at. And that's something that the report will come back to. Madam Mayor, can I? Uh, um, just to have you completed. The finally, one is look, I'm sure the current off leash areas are maintained, and I don't know if anyone can uh, find them otherwise to report them immediately to council. If I see something that's broken or wrong, I ring council and let them know. I'd expect, uh, I hope every other council will do that and every other member of the community. So that's my amendment. Thank you. Councillor Page. Madam Mayor, if we do uh, have this report come back, I think it's very appropriate, as Councillor Kennedy alluded to, the costings on our system uh, that we used to have in place compared to what we have today. And I'd like to see how much uh, Councillor Kennedy has said there's a huge cost difference. I think it's appropriate that we know the difference in that cost and the ratepayers would like to know as well, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Any further speaker for the amendment? No further speaker for the amendment? I'll put the- uh, No, I'll speak to the amendment. Oh, okay. Amendment. No, um, speakers for the amendment. 
Yeah, I'm speaking to the amendment as the mover of the original motion. Councillor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's fine to say that we must have responsible pet owners and it's good to have responsible pet owners, but we all know, particularly when fireworks go off, no matter how responsible a pet owner is, dogs get out. Much more difficult for cats. Cats get out all the time. So you can be a completely responsible pet owner and still have your dogs and cats get out of the yards, out of the yard. What we, we as a council need to ensure is responsible pet management under the Companion Animals Act. We have obligations under 62A for cats and dogs and all companion animal acts, uh, animal, animals under the act. Two, when seized, provide them with an authorised spot to take them if council's pound is not available, because it's very, very hard for a person to find a dog in the street and deliver it to its owner. We don't have, normal people don't have facilities to microchip. Normal people aren't allowed to keep the dogs for 12 hours while they, when they find them at five o'clock when councils decided to knock off for the night and keep them in their, in their laundry. And under the Act, they're not meant to do that. They're meant to hand them over to an authorised area or the dog pound. So when council took over this, took over this responsibility, it was obviously a lot more involved than the councillors con considered or the management reported. Luckily, Council Allgate and I were quite aware of it right from the start and brought it up many times. Maybe from now on, before councillors dismiss what Council Allgate or I have to say, perhaps they should investigate the Act or have a look, a little look at the legislation before they tell people you cannot put your cat at the pound or you cannot hand in someone else's cat because there's no such thing as a stray. There is no such thing as a stray. All cats are companion animals under the Act. It's, they're not delegated as strays or ferals or anything else. If someone takes a cat, council has an obligation to take that. And I could read out 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68 of the Act, all similar things talking about the responsibility of seized and surrendered animals. And I'll just emphasise the point, the difference between a seized and a surrendered animal, people might think that, that a seized animal is some animal that's taken. A seized animal is any animal that is submitted that is not under the ownership of the person. An owner surrenders, a stranger seizes. That's the difference. I think people need to understand that. So if we find a cute little kitten out the front, and take it to the pound, that is a seized animal, which council has the same obligations as a seized dog. A surrendered dog or cat allows council a degree of flexibility because the owners decided to surrender it. This is another example where the council has made a decision that has not involved all the facts, and the community will pay significantly for it again, not only financially, but also the fact that people are being now being involved in dog attacks, cats are being killed on roads, other dogs are being killed when they're out. It's very disappointing, and I can understand why so many animal lovers in this city are so disappointed with the way council has handled, handled this whole, whole situation under the Companion Animal Acts as far as dogs and cats go. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, no further debate. I'll put the amendment. Um, all those in favour? Uh, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Carkwright, Councillor Cool, Councillor Gallagher, um, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley against, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page. Um, the amendment now becomes the motion, Councillor Kennedy, um, I noted that you spoke um, for the amendment. Do you want to speak again? No, I'll move an amendment, Madam Mayor. What's your amendment, Councillor? My amend amendment is uh, the motion as written with an extra paragraph that includes the costs associated with Council meeting all its obligations under the Companion Animals Act, including 
providing after hour services so people can take seized dogs and cats to the appropriate facility or to the pound. Thank you. Um, Councillor Orgate is Check, seconding that. Checking, checking that. Councillor Kennedy, do you want to speak to yes, your Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I will speak to that. Uh, this was something that Councillor Page had brought up and I agree totally, totally with it. It's fine to have a report on what we should be doing, but there also needs to be in a financial uh, component of that. It's just, and I'm thankful the general manager agreed that I was indeed right under what I said. There is a significant cost if people start handing in cats. It is going to be a significant cost to the community and council has an obligation to accept them. That needs to be part of the report. And I'd hope that Councillor Cool, if he would, would accept that as part of his motion and I'll withdraw the amendment. Okay, it's been seconded. Um, so we'll go forward. Um, speakers against the amendment. Madam Mayor, I think you, Councillor Kennedy, moved the amendment to prevent the justice there. Councillor Page, do you want to speak to the spirit of this? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yours is a motion now. So, Councillor. Yeah, no, because it's up further because we're dealing with this amendment and your motion um, is different to this motion. So this amendment. He, no, sorry, councillors, it wasn't adding a paragraph. You included your original motion. Oh, is that? You got it wrong. No, I said Councillor Cool's motion. I said the motion, which was Councillor Cool's. Okay. Plus an extra paragraph which was the the cost what is the last sentence sorry just reading it out the report to council includes costs associated with council meeting its obligations under the act companion animal act including providing the hours service so people can take seized cats and dogs to the pound Pound or authorised facility? I will that. I'll withdraw the amendment. Okay. So the amendment's been withdrawn. Good collaboration, everyone. We now have the, um, it's the motion. Um, no further debate. Councillor Kennedy as the original mover, no. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Call, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams and Mayor Turley. Thank you very much. The motion is passed. We'll move now to item four, motion of which notice has been given. Uh, report number four, slash 21, page 24. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the notice of motion, paragraphs one and two. Thank you, seconder. Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Allgate. Um, do you want to speak to your motion, Councillor? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move this motion because this wetland, when it was first proposed, um, I believe it was about 2005 or six or so before Council got the actual funding for this project, it was meant to be a bit of a dual in the crown of the Broken Hill community. It was, and it was when uh, Councillor Page was actually mayor of this city. It was proposed that it be open for walking, uh, an open water area. That water would be used, filtered from stormwater runoff and could be used to water ovals. None of that's happened. In fact, water has to, in some, some stages, be pumped in to the wetlands to keep it from drying out. That was not the intended use. And there was over a million dollars spent on the Mulga Creek wetlands. It has and still does have so much potential. The Broken Hill City Council did not meet its obligations. And unfortunately, this was at a time when the elected body 
was no longer an elected body. And this went ahead and it seemed to have been allowed to go ahead, be built and then closed off and met none of its aims to improve quarter, storm water runoff by removing pollutants from the water, promote environmental education, capture and store storm water, provide a public open space to be enjoyed, enhanced by the public amenity. We have the creek that goes off of that wetlands that is poorly kept. Uh, most of the time it's so choked up with weeds and grass that it barely flows. I did, have a, I did have a press release that was from 2014 or 15 that I was going to put in here and I chose not to, where council said, if we, if we actually clean the creek out, it would cause erosion. I don't understand where these people come from or have they been in Broken Hill for long when they make these comments. The Mulga Creek that comes off the Mulga Creek wetlands has always been, well, up until not that long ago, regularly maintained. I'm sure Councillor Page would remember how often people complained about the Mulga Creek and it was, it was cleaned regularly. We as a council need to start providing the services that the community want. A number of people have spoken to me about this and I chose to bring it up because I think it's something that council could do and do well and add to some of the good things that the council has done as far as providing netball courts, Queen Elizabeth Park, um, getting grants for the Soccer Oval, the Norm Fox, Alma Lighting. These are things that council have done well. And this could be another thing that council does well by simply fulfilling its obligations when it received a $500,000 grant. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Speakers against? No speakers against? Uh, amendment, Madam Mayor. What's your amendment, Councillor? Okay, my amendment would be um, serial one as written, and then that serial two points A, B, C, and D um, be replaced by that a report be prepared detailing the progress of works already undertaken and planned to maintain the wetlands and mitigate the possibility of future, future flooding in the local area, followed by a serial three, include the Mulga Creek wetlands in the memorandum of understanding to be developed with land care, Broken Hill. Um, do I have a seconder for that? Second to Councillor Brown. Councillor Norland, do you want to speak to your amendment? Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I get complaints about flooding because of the wetlands. This week, I went and inspected the work that's been done and significant amount of work's been done. Um, I believe it was contracted out to consolidate it, um, to backhoe out a lot of that muck that's um, built up in uh, dams one, two, and I think they're on their way to number three at the moment, and um, just clean the whole thing out because it's terribly overgrown. Um, and then the placement, I can see the placement of cement bags by way of a dike or weir, or uh, there's probably a better word, but you understand what I'm coming at. Um, down the far end to stop water spilling out over the road and flooding uh, properties towards the end of the wetlands area. Um, I also further understand from discussions um, with the acting general manager because of my concerns raised, I, and I did raise the concerns of those residents at the um, Audit and Risk Improvement Committee, and I know I wasn't alone um, in doing that. So acting general manager, I believe, um, has spoke around the gates which had failed to open during the last two flooding events. They actually opened due to water pressure building up and then let the water out the wetlands were actually jammed by reeds which have now been cleared. So clearly work is well underway, hence the um, amendment that I've put up tonight would really look forward to seeing that uh, where that's up to and where it's going. Um, 
But furthermore, Landcare, Broken Hill is doing a, a great job and to have them involved would help keep the wetlands um, under control and thank you. Madam Mayor, I'll speak against it. Yes, Councillor Page. In regard to that project, it was uh, put on the Broken Hill City Council to, uh, to do the project, whether we agreed or not. It was $500,000 at the time that was uh, paid. It ended up costing us $1.3 million. And uh, I 100% disagree with what you're saying and proposing. And the reason why, nature, that was designed for nature to do its job. And at the moment, I think down there, if it was maintained a little bit better, all the things that Councillor Kennedy would like to see happen there would be achievable. So as far as digging it out and wrecking it, it should be let nature do its job there. So 100% disagree with what you're proposing. Uh, and I think you should go down and have a look at the, you know, the, the site and uh, it's doing now what it was designed to do. Yes, the flooding down there is through lack of maintenance, as you just alluded to. So uh, let's look after the area. To get in and rip it out and dig it out, it's the height of bloody uh, rudeness. Oh, through you, Madam Mayor, might I make a point of clarification as to what I said? Um, Be clarification? Out of yeah. respect for Councillor Page, because I think we're close to the same page. I was talking about that the ponds had had the excess buildup of mud and silt and excessive growth of weeds clean. That's a, that's a maintenance thing I'm talking about. Um, and then some uh, clearing up around the gates so the gates could work properly and some further shoring up of the bank so that in a flooding event, less uh, flooding would be less likely. Um, so I certainly support the wetlands and support the concept that's there and would, would like to see it working a whole lot better. And my comments around it being cleaned out is that yes, in fact, I did go down there twice and have a really good look. Um, thank, thank you. So clean out and maintenance is, is underway. And thank you. And I appreciate uh, Councillor Page's just, thoughts. Just in thank you. Just, I'll just make a comment. In regard to that area down there, it used to be called the company dam. The water flowed in there. Uh, there was a valve to let it out slowly to stop the flooding. Now it's a soccer oval. So a lot of changes have been made in regard to our drainage. And when you fix a drainage area somewhere, one thing you can be sure of, and I don't have to say it, you know, it causes another problem. Thanks, councillors. Now, any can speakers I, can I for a, the amendment? Can I make a comment? Uh... Uh, so, so we're getting into a bit of comment. Do you need any clarification? I'm not gonna take any more comments. I need clarifications, no. Um, speakers for the amendment? Any further speakers for the amendment? No. I'll speak to the amendment. Councillor, um, last right, time. As moved are you speak, motion. Yes, you're a mover of the motion. But so when I can speak for or against anything yeah, I Yeah, but your I debate like. has to be for the amendment. No, I just have to, I can speak to the, the amendment. No. I don't have to speak for the amendment. It is, the debate has to be as a, a for the amendment. If you're speaking for the amendment. No, no, as the mover of the motion, anyone that moves an amendment to it, I get to speak about it because it was my original motion. Until someone else okay, becomes that's the what motion. You're saying. What, what I heard was you were speaking for the motion. Yeah, so for my motion. For you, Councillor, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's been five times tonight, nothing's changed. I'm still speaking to every amendment like I always well, do. That's, that's your role as a councillor. That's right. What I find particularly interesting about and a little bit disappointing, disappointed really from Councillor Nolan. Um, he removed number two, A, B and C, D, which was to explain why, why the council got a $500,000 grant and spent $800,000 of community money to do the wetlands, to provide, and if the council looks on page 28, which was straight out of the, straight out of what the project aim was and provided the councillors when they agreed to have that money, which blew out to 1.3 million, as Councillor Page said, improve the quality of stormwater runoff by removing pollutants from the water. That was a, in my motion that Councillor Nolan is talking about removing. So 
Councillor Nolan in saying the community have no right to know why council spent 1.3 million and didn't do what they were obligated to do. B, in the, on page 26 in the pamphlet, promote environmental education and research with co cooperative partnerships. B, in my notice of motion, which Councillor Nolan is attempting to amend to get rid of because he doesn't believe that the community has the right to know why council never did that, even though they spent $1.3 million of community and grant money, which may have been better off spent somewhere else. C, oh, and just further on to the promote education and research examples, then we talk about land care. Council talks about providing them with education opportunities. Geez, that was meant to be done in 2008. Councillor Nolan decides that we shouldn't be looking at that. Perhaps we should just go with land care rather than find out why it hasn't been done until 2008, 13 years later. C, capture the storm water to further improve water quality and to allow residual water to be used for irrigation. Again, $1.3 million spent. Councillor Nolan doesn't believe the community has a right to know why that didn't happen. Why soccer can't use that water and save a little bit of money on costs or that the water that is going out of that would be much cleaner for the Imperial Lake. But 1.3 million, who cares? You know, we spent 20 odd million at the Civic Centre. What's 1.3 million? Provide a public open space to be enjoyed and enhance the public amenity. What right does the community have to know why we spent 1.3 million and that was never done? Who are who are these people that pay rates that think they have a right to ask? Point of order, why? Madam Mayor. Yes, what's your point of order, Councillor? I have a feeling that Councillor Kennedy is grandstanding. He oh. mentioned earlier about uh, some councillors in this room getting ready for an election. I think he is, and I think it's pretty rude of him to be going on as he is at the moment. Could councillor Kennedy direct your debate? Could I be shown under the Act where, uh, where a councillor grandstands is a breach of the Code of Conduct, Councillor Adams, or she Mayor didn't Turley? say councillor uh, councillor she didn't say it's a breach of the Code of Conduct. She called a point of order. Well, what's a, where in the Act is it a point? Is it against meeting rules to do that, Madam councillor, Mayor? Because um, I like to learn things. Councillor, when I'm told. good. We like to educate you too. Well, so vexatious. Educate. What you're doing to councillor, the way you're behaving with councillor Nolan in the debate comes across as vexatious. And so we would ask you to continue to debate in the manner that you are accustomed to. Well, I apologise if uh, um, talking about saving the community 1.3 million, uh, finding out about $1.3 million is vexatious. Um, I would hate anyone in the community or the council to think I was being vexatious to ask where 1.3 million would Councillor, be, so I apologise. I don't want you to run out of time, so continue on. Oh, well, anyone else want to interrupt? This is the usual well, standard I'm the chair. when I'm speaking. I can, I'm trying to But it comes off my time every time you interrupt. Councillor, I don't. I actually stop the clock. So well, please continue. Well, now I have to go back to apparently anyone's allowed to interrupt me. It's not the same for other councillors. Uh, it's quick to be pointed out if anyone else uh, does anything to another councillor. Um, so council had an obligation. They spent 1.3 million. And I find it a little bit disingenuous to believe that the community don't have a right to know why the $1.3 million is spent to produce, a pro, uh, produce the Mulga wetlands with the project aimed were A, B, C and D, why any council would believe that the community don't have a right to know why that didn't happen. Thank you, councillor. Any further speakers for the amendment? If not, I'll put the amendment, all those in favour, um, and again, oh, all those in favour, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley, against, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher. Uh, the amendment now becomes a motion. 
Is there any further debate before I ask Councillor Kennedy if he'd like a right of reply? No further debate, Councillor Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So this is a thing when you move a motion, you get to speak. So when councillors that do attempt to slow down my speech or take my minutes away as I speak, I get another five minutes. So Point I can order. I continue yeah. to. Can you ask Councillor Kennedy to get to the point? Stop lecturing your fellow councillors. I'm allowed to lecture, actually. No. No. To. I am actually. It certainly was that just a madam mayor there was just a threat of a code of conduct there it's against the act to mention codes of conduct he's threatening me with the code of conduct okay, councillor kennedy please progress with your right of reply well were you going to rule these councillors out of order that had making points of order that are not actually points of order they're just interruptions interruptions and threats of codes of conduct councillor madam kennedy. mayor point of order madam mayor look this is what we've got to get through tonight. That's not a point of order. Well, oh, here we go again. I said that's not a point of order. You did ask to me to rule on a point of order. Out of order? That's Councillor, all right. she... my apologies, Madam Mayor. Please, can we move on with the debate? Thank you, Councillor. Well, would be two or three minutes into the debate if two councillors didn't continue to interrupt. <laughs> oh, now laugh, giggle. Yeah, you know, it's very disrespectful. I, I really, that's disgusting. You know this. Who, who makes comments like this? In a, in a public okay. forum where I'm trying to speak, speak on important issues like $1.3 million for the Mulga wetlands, it's that disgraceful. Uh, it's disgraceful. No, it's oh. disgraceful, it really is, Madam. Councillor Clark, can we let Councillor Kennedy oh, I continue? Again, Madam Mayor, I am conscious of the time. However, we'll just have to debate. extend the time, Councillor. Mm. As the chair, it's my role to extend the time. Councillor Kennedy, your right of reply, please. It's just very off-putting, Madam Mayor, to be interrupted with disgraceful and that. That's heckling from the thing as I'm trying to speak. It is, it is, it's off-putting and it, it makes it almost impossible for me to put my point forward because Councillor Clark may be in a hurry to get home because she's got to go through this and she's worried about time. Well, I'm worried about $1.3 million. Worried about $1.3 million in a report that said it had project aims. You know, I'm talking about serious stuff and I'm being interrupted about disgraceful and things like that. That's not appropriate. I'll continue. I hope I don't get more anger. More anger and foul looks. Um, <laughs> Madam Mayor, well, that, Councillor Clark is What's pulling faces point? at me. He's berating us across the chamber with these under-breath comments. Madam I'm asking Madam Mayor is... to put a stop to it. Yes, Councillor, can I ask all Councillor, thank you, LaCour, for your point of order. Mm -hmm. Councillor Kennedy, you are to address the debate of your right of reply, <clears throat> not trying to berate other councillors. I'm not trying to berate it. They're interrupting me, Madam Mayor. I don't think you realise those two are interrupting my five minutes. I'm not interrupting them. Okay. I'm not yelling out disgrace okay. as they're speaking. Councillor Kennedy, can you please progress? Well, even mentioning things like berate because I'm saying I don't like them speaking to me or pulling faces as I speak. I don't see them pulling faces, Councillor. Well, maybe I'm making a mistake, but it looks like it to me. Do you want to go on with your debate, Councillor? Yes, I do. If you. I could not be bullied harassed by two councillors over there that got the majority. <laughs> the goal of the wetlands, uh, don't try and intimidate me, Councillor LaCour. Madam Mayor, Come on. he's now saying that we're intimidating him across the floor. Well, that's how I'm feeling, Madam Mayor. I'm feeling quite intimidated. Well, Ma Councillor... Ma Madam Mayor, Councillor Allgate and Councillor Kennedy were chastised er very early in the meeting for speaking whilst you were speaking and whilst others were speaking. The Labor Party over there, particularly Councillor Clark, is always mumbling and speaking and carrying on through every meeting when, when Councillor Kennedy speaks. It's, it's obvious to everybody. You can't just turn a blind eye to it. It's happening. It Thank happens you, every Councillor. meeting. Thank you, Councillor. Can I remind all councillors, while councillor is speaking, that we are to listen. Councillor. 
Thank Can you, you please Madam now Mayor. continue. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. The goal of the wetlands was to have an amenity that provided educational opportunities, which Councillor Nolan was talking about land care. That is an educational opportunity. That's things that should be happening. That's why I asked for a report why it isn't happening. What also isn't happening is that the water's not being used to water ovals. Is there not enough water going into those, those wetlands for it to be used for watering? Simple, simple question, why hasn't it happened? There could be an easy answer, but the original intent of the motion was to find out why, why the original purpose has not been, been done. It would be a fantastic thing if the water that goes in there could actually supplement the water, watering of ovals. Improve the quality of stormwater. Is that happening? Maybe that is happening. Maybe the the the, the weeds, the natural, uh, as Councillor Page said, nature takes care of water. The weeds actually remove pollutants. That may be happening. A report would would have would have resolved that. Provide a public open space to enjoy amenity. A report would have provided why that didn't happen or why it couldn't happen. But I think all councillors and the community would have liked to have known why. And I really am disappointed that we can't even find out why the water in that catchment can't be used to water ovals, because apparently it wasn't important and it disappoints me. Thank you, councillor. Um, thank you for your right of reply. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Um, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, uh, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley against, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher. The motion is passed. Thank you, everyone. We'll now move to item five, uh, report number five slash 21, page 29, Councillor Kennedy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the uh, first paragraph. The second paragraph I'll move with an addendum uh, which reads proceed to install disabled parking or a drop-off zone at the front of the Silver City Cinema and three and four as written. Thank you Madam Mayor. So removing start the process to proceed. No, no, so everything the same except for uh, so that the Broken Hill City Council immediately start the process to install disabled parking or a drop-off zone at the front of the Silver City Cinema. So the, the added bit is or a drop-off zone. Okay, Councillor Page, you're seconding that? Okay. Sorry, Councillor Allgate seconded. Okay. I'd Councillor like Allgate. to ask... So I've just got to get, Councillor, you're moving an amendment? I've no, got to... I'd, I'd like to ask a question. Can I just let Councillor Kennedy to speak to his motion first? Yep. And then we'll take a question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move this motion because I consider John Wren an icon of the city. Uh, he is disabled. He was dropped off at the front of that cinema only to get out to walk to the front of his door. It sent a bad message to not only such a valuable member of the community, but also the community as a whole. It sent a message that council was uncaring. Whether that is true or not is irrelevant. Perceptions are way more important than reality. The perception is that it was heavy handed and unwarranted. This is an opportunity for the council to make amends for what has happened and directly improve a situation that was what I would consider poor public relations for the Broken Hill City Council. Thank you. Any further speakers against the motion? Council oh, sorry, Councillor Page, yes. Is it, is it true that Council has started a, uh, a project down there in regard to the, <laughs> the ramps in the area, the uh, Disabled ramps is I thought I thought I'd seen the other day where council put out a uh, press release saying they they have started there in regard to the uh, ramps disabled ramps you know for you've got footpaths down there and yeah. it's part of your footpath program have you started in that area uh, Mr Acting General Manager could you also provide an update of 
what's been done so far with this position. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Oh, yeah, that's that's correct. We're um, yeah, currently okay. upgrading the um, the footpaths and intersections on Blend and yeah, Oxide yeah. Street to improve um, mobility access as a part of the rollout across the as the CBD as per our active transport plan. Um, and this matter at the moment is um, council is doing a full parking order of the CBD, inclusive of uh, disability parking. Um, pickups and the loading zones as we had that issue earlier or late last year and that'll go back to traffic committee for recommendations. Thank you. I, I have a question. A uh, question, Councillor Adams. Is your microphone on? Uh, I was just, would the acting general manager be able to actually walk us through uh, the, the events and how this happened? But, you know, once we employed a, a, a ranger to uh, tidy up our parking problems, signs were distributed. Um, what actually happened from there as far as step by step? Once, once someone has found parking in a, a non-parking zone. Councillor Adams, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, so it was um, in July when this event occurred and it's uh, as per our rangers will go through the city. Anyone that is in an illegal parking area um, will get fined if they pick up on it. This is one of those circumstances where uh, it was a no parking zone and you couldn't stop and the ranger did uh, fine uh, the, the gentleman um, as, as, per, as per their direction at the time, obviously um, parking the legal spot. So um, that's the process. The process since then has been that um, the, the person can uh, put in an argument with Revenue, South, Revenue New South Wales after receiving their fine, and then it can come back to council for assessment or whether or not the fines pursued, uh, waived, or um, whether there's any evidence uh, to back it up. So from that though, is the fine uh, served by council or by New South Wales Revenue? Uh, the fine itself served by Revenue New South Wales, but under the uh, instruction from Broken Hill City Council. Thank you. So just to clarify, will the, when um, they've, they've put in a request to waiver the fine, does that come to the councillors? Do the councillors have the role in that? It'll, it'll go to council staff under delegations and it'll be reviewed. And obviously there is um, room for leniency in circumstances like this, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, a question, please, Madam Mayor, through you. Yes, perhaps, perhaps the general manager could uh, further elaborate. Um, has the gentleman involved um, gone through any process of disputing the fine or asking for the fine to be waived at this point? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes. Mr. General Manager, Acting General Manager. <laughs> yes, that's correct. We've made contact uh, with the person and they are following it up through Revenue, Revenue New South Wales. Once that comes back to council, we'll be, act, we'll be able to act appropriately. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Can I just ask one question? Yes. I think I think I know the answer, but in regard to those fines, we only get a small percentage of the fine, the council. Mr. General, Acting General Manager. Thanks, Madam Mayor. No, we, we do pay a, a portion to Revenue New South Wales because they're acting on our behalf, but we get the we get the actual fine amount. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you. Uh, I have an amendment, Madam Mayor. What's your amendment, Councillor? Uh, that we uh, that the motion be number one and number two. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a, I'm sorry, is there a seconder? Seconder for Councillor Adams. Okay. Councillor Clark, thank you. Councillor Adams, do you want to speak to the amendment? Uh, I, I agree that there should be some kind of parking and uh, I, I actually prefer the, um, uh, the drop-off drop in front of the, uh, in front of there so that uh, everyone will be able to use that. Um, the reason that I'm only going for one and two is that a staff person, a staff member was employed to do the job that they did. And as much as we, we all know and respect John, um, it was really the car that got booked and the person that booked it didn't know who the person owned, that was owned the car. I think once the process began, it's reached where it has and uh, hopefully it will, be, will reach a, a suitable conclusion 
are going through the appropriate channel to do so. Okay, speakers against? No speakers against? I'll speak to the amendment, Madam Mayor. Councillor Gallagher, uh, Kennedy? Yes, look, Council has the, uh, has the right to withdraw any fines and we can move a motion tonight and it happens. Simple as that. The policy of delegation and the policy is as written can be changed from time to time under the Act by Council at any time. So every time we move a motion in here, it changes policy, even if it's only for a minute for one item. This is we've been through this before. We went through it four years ago when there was a debate in this council chamber with a former manager of the city council that said that we didn't have the right to change policy after going through the through the act council has the right to change policy time to time at any council meeting uh, we're not bound to we're not bound specific from the policies in the act it says the policies are the overriding document which council can change from time to time in a council meeting without changing the word of their policies. Uh, I could find that if I was given 15, 20 minutes, but I don't need to find that. It's just making the point uh, that council does have, have the authority to withdraw a fine. I don't know if many people have dealt with the state debt, uh, state uh, revenue office. Uh, I have had many people come to me requesting help in matters to do with the issuing of fines from Broken Hill City Council that they believed was unjust. Uh, and the reason I moved a motion in September to establish a local review committee um, that Councillor Brown argued strongly against, strongly against because she said during her debate, and anyone can listen to the September meeting, said that she doesn't know of many issues that this doesn't happen in, and the people that she does knows got off of it. Well, all the people I know to date that have written in haven't got off, because if someone goes to the September business paper, there's only a few things that give exemptions under the state debt recoveries, ability to look at things. Were you not the person? Was it delivered by mistake? Um, and a number of other uh, hardship. Um, oh, good, good driving record is another one. So chances of the state debt recovery removing Mr. John Wren's fine is probably very unlikely unless the council contacts the state debt recovery office and asks them to come up with a recommendation to withdraw it. I've spoken to the debt recovery office many, many times about council issued fines and ultimately council has the authority to tell them to do what? As the acting general manager says, council is the issuing authority that collects the fine and pays a fee to the state debt recovery office to administer something we can administer ourselves. They are a contractor pro providing a service to council. Councillors can decide to waive their obligation, but don't pretend that councillors couldn't do anything. We can, we could, we should, Remove the fine and apologise to John Wren. If you vote not to do it, don't send out two messages if, as if you couldn't do it or you wanted to do it, but it was the employee that did it and we shouldn't be um, undermining them. We have the authority, we can do it, and if you choose not to do it, that's fine, but you've chosen not to do it. Madam Mayor, can I ask another question? Yes, Councillor. My understanding is you've already arrange for the fine not to be paid, is that the case? Um, Mr. General, Acting General Manager, and can I add to that, um, the policy is not a council policy, is it? Or is it a state revenue policy? And can councillors withdraw it or is it delegated 
So thank you if you can answer them. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, firstly, it's a, it's a council policy for the for the issuing of fines, and we go through the State Revenue Act. Um, in relation to Councillor Page's question, um, after speaking to the the person when we said to um, put an objection in through Revenue New South Wales, the intent is for it to come back to council officers uh, to review and apply leniency if required. And uh, thirdly, yes, councillors can waive uh, waive the fines as the council policy, um, but these these matters are um, given to staff under delegations to keep it um, keep it in an operational matter and consistent um, with the appropriate policy. Councillor Gallagher, just a comment, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, having knowing, do you have a question or no clarification? Question, just a clarification. Knowing the state debt recovery uh, unit as I do, um, they do issue fines. The governing body does do issue fines. It does go back to the relevant authority, whether it's the dog catcher, whether it's the police, whether it's the RMS, whether it's in the maritime services, and obviously council. And they, that they ultimately is the issuing officer for the delegate authority and the opposition to others withdraw it, could proceed, or uh, give it for pursuit or, or withdraw. Madam Mayor. If one councillor is allowed to make comment, can you apply that rule to every councillor? Yes, I did not say to councillor, Canada, councillor Gallagher not to make a comment, to make a clarification. So I did say that to him, councillor. Apologise. Um, thank you, um, councillors. We are up to the debate. Um, we'll put it to the, put the amendment to the vote. Sorry, Councillor. Yeah. Oh, I think I think it's on. Um, so, is it in our province to be able um, to waive it, or has that time not occurred? The yet? issue is the delegation. We have a policy of delegation that um, to the acting general manager or to the staff member mm. um, that the process is in play, and that. If we change a policy, we have to go out to the public. Yeah. We can't just change okay. policy on the moment. There is a process to change policy. I'll and move, that a, move a motion of uh, dissent from your ruling, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. No, Thank it you. is within our thing to change policy from time to time. I only just finished saying that. Um, council can change at a meeting a policy, and the general manager did just make it quite clear it is up to council to decide, but to keep it an operational matter, it's best that council remain, not get involved and allow it to continue as, as an operational matter. That is completely different to what you're saying, completely different to th thing that that, it, that is fact. The general manager just pointed out that we can, uh, but he uh, thinks it's a bad move because it could have unwanted um, ramifications, more or less, because it separates the governing body from the operational, because you could end up dealing with these things all the time, was more or less the uh, the response. Now, council can do change policy, and it does not change the policy that would require 28 days notice or whatever. You can make a one-off motion uh, as many times as you like that is in the direct negative of a said council policy that does not require 28 days notice or less you are going to then use the policy regularly under that way. We spent four years ago, we, we spent half hour in this chamber arguing about that very point and council come back with the relevant legislation that did show that councillors can make the decision to go against policy via a majority vote of council without indeed changing the policy at all. No need for 28 days notice, no need to change the policy, but a much clear majority of councillors can go against the policy by council decision. Thank you, councillor. Mr. General Manager, did you want to add anything, acting general manager, did you want to add anything else to that? Um, no, that's, that's, that's fine, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll put the amendment all those in favour of the amendment? Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley, all those in favour? Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page? Sorry? Sorry, against. Uh, sorry, against. 
Thank you, everyone. All those against, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate and Councillor Page. The amendment is now the motion. Uh, if there's no further debate, Councillor Kennedy, did you want to have a right of reply? No, oh, I think there's been enough on that one. No, I think you gave very good debate, Councillor. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Councillor Kennedy, uh, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley, and against? Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page. Thank you. We will now move to item nine, a rescission motion for which none has been given. Item 10, reports from delegates for which none has been given. Item 11, um, so report 11. Um, item one, Broken Hill City Council report number one slash 21, dated February 16th, 2021, correspondence report New South Wales train link coach services between Broken Hill and Adelaide and between Adelaide, Broken Hill and Majura. Page 34, Councillor. Move that way, Madam Mayor. You're moving that way. I'll second that way. Seconded by um, Councillor Gallagher. Um, speaker, do you want to speak to the motion? No, uh, just, well, it's just extremely important that we keep pushing that we try and make this permanent. Thank you. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? A unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. Item two, Broken Hill City Council report number two slash 21, page 37. This is the attendance and call for motions to the Murray-Darling Association National Conference and AGM in Wentworth, 16th to the 19th of May. Do I have a mover? Move that way. Moved by Councillor Allgate. Seconder Clark. Uh, councillors, I think one of the issues we have is that council determines motions and submit motions to the conference to be held on the second of the motions are to be held to the, sorry, let me start again. The council submit its motions to the Murray-Darling Association by the 2nd of March. So can we ask uh, Councillor Brown? I, I was just going to say, uh, Madam Mayor, we also need to um, make a decision about our representation. I'd quite like to attend. I think it's only in Wentworth it's going to be. I think we need to, uh, yes, it does. Item two, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, uh, of this recommendation is that council determine its delegates. So, councillor, could I call for nominations to attend? This is in Wentworth. It is a water conference. It's a very important conference. Can I ask councillors who would like to attend? I'll go around the room. Councillor Kennedy? I may be able to, Madam Mayor. Okay. Can you let us know fairly soon for registration and we'll report back? Uh, Councillor Allgate, Councillor Page? Okay. Councillor Gallagher? No, Madam Mayor. Okay. No, Madam Mayor. Councillor Nolan? No, Madam Mayor. Councillor Brown? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Councillor Clark? Um, I, I understand that you can attend by video conference as well. So I might elect to do that, Madam okay. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Lukul? No, I, I will look at my calendar as well if I can attend. Can I ask Council uh, then if we have no motions at the moment that we forward motions to the Acting General Manager and we can review them and take them to the Murray-Darling Association National Conference um, on the 2nd of March. Okay, um, I'll put, Councillor Orgate, do you want to write a reply? Do you want to write a reply? You were the mover? No, uh, uh, it's all set in the, in the okay. report. Okay, I'll put the motion, all those in favour. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. We'll move to item three, Broken Hill City Council report number three slash 21. Uh, this is the National General Assembly of Local Government call for motions, page 49. Again, councillors, um, you know, council needs to determine the motions. Now, this is called for by the 26th of March. Mr Acting General Manager, have you thought how we can handle this? Because we need a copy of uh, resolutions by the council, don't we? Yes, Madam Mayor. So we did circulate the motions that were used last time um, yesterday, but we do need a council resolution for the motions. 
So Council will do, I'll just take a mover for this. I'll move that way. Councillor Gallagher, including? Including the, move, the, the, um, the motions that were circulated, which is similar or exactly the same as the motions that were going to be presented last year. When it was Thank you. Thank you. I think Councillor Adams is seconding it. No, okay. Councillor Clark, okay. Thank you. I'll put that all those in favour. No, oh, I wanted to say something, Madam Yes, Councillor, sorry, Councillor Brown. Um, yes, uh, I'd like to, um, could I suggest, and this came out of a conversation I had yesterday with the Acting General Manager, and I apologise for not um, um, submitting anything in writing, but I'd like to see uh, a motion along the lines that um, the, the uh, uh, federal government ensures that there's a, an adequate um, uh, provision of uh, charging points for electric vehicles. I wouldn't wouldn't like to see um, regional areas such as Broken Hill uh, deprived of um, the ability to you know to to purchase electric vehicles and use it and to attract people here. I think it just needs um, uh, uh, the government, I think, or private agencies, whoever's involved, just to, to just to ensure that we have enough uh, charging stations so people can go anywhere in this state and you know around around the country eventually, hopefully, with an, uh, an electric vehicle. Because I, I, um, I, I, people are anticipating that the uh, the change to electric vehicles will happen. You know, once it starts, once it gains momentum, it'll it'll happen happen very quickly and I, I don't want us to be left out. I haven't sort of put any words to that, but- um, I think that's pretty if... succinct. Councillor Gallagher, are you happy to include that? I'm happy to include it as long as it's, we know what the motion is. Um, although I know the intent of Councillor Brown in relation to it's very good, but as long as it's formalised and then circulated to the councillors and yep, you may yep. have to have extraordinary meeting just to clarify it um, for that issue, but uh, we'll just see what happens from there, but I'm happy to include it. Thank you, Councillor. Um, and the seconder, Councillor Clark, you're happy to include that? Um, yes, I, I am, Madam Mayor, because um, electric vehicles are already on the roads. They're not in great profusion because um, we have our uh, federal and, and state governments, which are a little uh, slow to move towards um, just need a yes or no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I would. But Thank I you. would like to say, uh, just in, in addition to what, um, Councillor Gallagher said, um, sorry, Councillor Gallagher, um, that uh, it should, be, that we might have to have an extraordinary meeting. Would this meeting no, be Councillor, happy? Sorry, we don't need to have an extraordinary meeting. No. It was, we just need to circulate it. That's what so, I'm thinking, yeah, and we so. can vote on it by. Yep. Email, if you object sorry. to it, we'll so. knock it out. Yeah, okay. Right, thank um, you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? A unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. Can I just say I heard yesterday um, uh, someone travelling to Adelaide in a car had to go back. Um, travelling to Sydney on their holiday had to go back because they didn't realise there were charging points. So um, Councillor Brown and I have not had that conversation. Just, Item Madam four. Mayor, you've made a comment. I'd like to make one too, that earlier tonight we had a presentation and uh, Councillor Nolan made it clear that his son has a you know, electric car and uh, he does his own charging at home. I think we have to have a look at that too to make Thank sure. Thank you, Councillor. I don't think, yes, we, I didn't hear that comment. We're not going into that now. You can put it <laughs> I in. I wonder a, why. Because <laughs> we're trying not to get you to comment. Thank you. Um, item four, uh, report number four slash 21, page 65, delivery program, key performance indicators, progress report for period ending 21st, 31st of December, 2020. Do I have a mover for that? Moved by Councillor Brown, seconder, Councillor LeCool. Councillor Brown, do you want to speak to that? No, Madam Mayor, I think we just make the same comments that it's um, it uh, covers a period that's not yet complete. So um, those projects that aren't complete, um, that haven't been affected by COVID, I'm uh, assuming that at the, next, uh, at the next report, at the end of this reporting period, we'll, we'll see lots of green. Thank you. Speakers against? No, I'll move an amendment. Thanks. What's Madam your Mayor. amendment, Councillor? Uh, my amendment is the recommendations one and two, and number three, that a, a report be 
prepared for council on the backlog of construction certificates and the impact that has had on council and the community. I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Councillor Page. I move that motion, Madam, uh, that amendment, Madam Mayor, because quite obvious from what was in the paper today, and on, I, I would hope that all councillors are aware of it. Uh, I have been probably contacted by near all 60 of those people, I'd say. They are not happy. They're losing faith in not only the Broken Hill City Council, but the Broken Hill community. One fellow waited 18 months and decided to give up and move. That is not an isolated uh, issue. Some, most are not that long, thank, thankfully, but they are still six months, 12 months. And that's a long time to be waiting to get things done. It's not good enough. We, as a council say, we're open for business. We're here to encourage business. We're here to encourage development. And one of the things that is really a core, a core function of council is to approve de development applications and construction certificates so that people can do what they need to do. It is disappointing that it's got to this stage, but if in that report it could also mention what council's proposed solutions are too, so not just make it a negative report, but also a report on what council uh, is deciding how they're going to address that so that that backlog will be taken care of and the community can give, be given confidence that it will be addressed and hopefully never happens again. Thank you, Madam Thank Mayor. you, Councillor. Um, we have that. Speakers against? No speakers against? Um, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Brown. Madam Mayor, did I move that? Was I the motion? You back? moved the original motion. Yes, but I, I'm just saying I didn't have an opportunity to say. Oh, sorry. I would, I would accept that. I would accept that amendment. That's fine with me, Madam Mayor. So you're going to... Accept I, yes, I'll accept. I accept the uh, uh, Councillor Kennedy's amendment as an uh, addendum to the original in the, recommendation. In the motion, okay. Thank you. Good collaboration. Um, I'll put that one aside. So that'll be included in Councillor in Councillor Brown's motion. If there's no further debate, I'll put the motion. All those in favour. Against declared a carriage unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Mayor, just before you move on, can someone have a look at the air conditioning? It's very warm in here. We'll and turn it back on. It's well, just very noisy. The, well, we can open the front door and get some fresh air in. No, just we'll turn the air con back on. That's Thank sorry. you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Thanks, councillors. Item five, Broken Hill City Council report number five slash twenty-one. Um, date 8th of February, Disability Inclusion Action Plan Key Performance Indicator Progress Report for period ending the 31st of December 2020, page 103. So moved, Madam Mayor. Councillor Nolan, seconder. Second that way. Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Nolan, do you want to speak to the motion? Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It was very pleasing to see 68 of these key performance indicators on track. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, there are still 10 that need attention. Um, but in the non-acceptable range, there are zero. And in the monitoring, there are zero. So there are 10 to get back on track, but there are 68 that are on track and um, still with some time to go. Um, look, disability inclusion is so important, especially in a town with an increasingly aging population, as well as people with disabilities in any case. Um, and it is our responsibility and it's good to see us getting on with. Thank you. Comment, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Adam. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, make the comment that I think it's an extremely good report. Um, thank you. Uh, but I would, what I would really like to say is that 
it has been wonderful to see the number of people from within, within the disability services actually becoming uh, part of the disability committee meet, you know, disability meetings. Um, they really know what they're talking about. They're the people that we need to listen to, and we have been listening. Uh, and the report shows that. And I just think we're going in the right direction with this. Sorry, Council, I didn't realise. I've only wanted a clarification. Um, any speakers against? No speakers against. I'll put the motion, all those in favour. Unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. Move to item six, Broken Hill City Council report uh, 6 21, dated 19th of November 2020, page 138, the um, draft Queen Elizabeth Park plan of management. Do I have a mover for that? Councillor Clark, second by Councillor Adams. Councillor Clark, do you want to speak to that? Um, I, I think the community is um, delighted with the speed with which this is um, progressing, Madam Mayor. Um, it's it's um, been uh, on the strategic plan, on the community strategic plan. A lot of people uh, are looking forward to seeing just what council can do with this. Thank you. Thank you. Any speakers against? No speakers against. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. Item seven, Broken Hill City Council report number seven slash 21, dated February 16th, page 200. This is the draft renewable energy action plan. Do uh, I have sorry. a mover, councillor Brown? Second, no, councillor, no. sorry? Sorry. Oh. No, councillor Brown had a hand up. So, councillor Nolan, are you seconding? In that case, I'm seconding. Thank yeah. you, Madam Mayor. So, um, Councillor Brown, do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. I think we had quite a bit of discussion, and um, we have we have had the benefit of the presentation by um, uh, uh, whatever they're called, um, Ashley Bland, anyway, and his and his company. Uh, there, there has been no uh, commentary on the uh, no public submissions on this, so. Uh, nothing's really changed since this was presented as a as a draft. So yes, I'm happy to move. This. Thank you. Speakers again? Yes, I'll speak against, Madam, Madam Mayor. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, there's some really good things in this and the re presentation, the prior presentation to the one tonight about council providing its own electricity um, generation site via solar. That, the reason I like that so much. Councillor Kennedy, I think you need to speak closer into oh, the microphone. Oh, sorry, is that better? It's just with the air con. Oh, okay. I'll, so, I'll start doing my normal loud speaking. No, I don't need to yell at me. <laughs> I just need to speak into the microphone. Okay. I, I have good so, news, though. I think the microphones will be new next for March meeting. Okay. Uh, there's some very good things in this, in this report. Uh, and going to the first presentation, what I liked about it was, and it... it not only can it help the environment, but it was also about uh, the potential to, <coughs> sorry, to save council money and save the community money. Uh, the LED lighting was a big thing that was mentioned, and that was the fact that <coughs> that is night time, so that won't affect uh, affect the the solar the amount produced in solar. Uh, those other buildings that produce a lot of money so that that was the positive and I can see see the benefits of the positive and I hope that that does go ahead other parts of the report I'm not so so keen on uh, I think they they cost the community money rather than save the community money uh, they don't do much for the environment and I'm thankful that in the report they didn't spend as much time on those those um, those things as others but what I, the reason I speak against this, and I can understand, and I hope that it goes ahead, is too often we spend fifty thousand dollars, then we, I think it's earmarked for another fifty thousand, and then two hundred and fifty thousand for the final, final um, project to pick a site. You're looking at three hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Too often, it gets to the point where we spend a lot of money on plans, and it never gets to the point where something's done and 
we go to the next stage where there is a saving and council has done something for the community. So I speak against it because of the 50,000 that needs to be spent. And all too often, we don't get to the stage where there's a benefit. Um, I would like to perhaps have, have a motion move that we are going to actually do something and then go on to the next part rather than get a report and spend the money. We end up spending 350,000 and then it's a no go. So for that reason, I'll vote, uh, speak against it and probably vote against it. I'll, I'll second that, Madam Mayor. And There's I, no seconding, sorry, Councillor. I don't think he was moving an amendment. He was just speaking a motion, Councillor. Very well, enthusiastic My apology, tonight. Madam Mayor, because this is a big no, issue. Councillor, we've no. already had a speaker again. Yeah, I'll just make comment. The, no uh, comment, Councillor Well, Orgate. Madam Mayor, you make comment, so you know yeah, different. Because I'm the chair. You may be the chair to chair meetings. You're not there to have comment. Councillor. And you're not there to, uh, to organise motions. I've never found you disrespectful. Not, Madam Mayor. It's the way you're conducting the meeting. Every time I put something forward, Councillor Kennedy, all gay, you, you treat us... Uh, Councillor no, Page, Madam Mayor, you I have your that... say. We're entitled to have ours. No, I feel I'm... intimidated Councillor... every time I come. That is... I'm shocked at your behaviour, Councillor. Thank you. Speakers... Madam Mayor, and I'm shocked with you. Thank you, Councillor. I remember that. Um, so, Councillor... Is there no speakers for? Councillor? Yeah, look, I am going to speak for, but only in the sense of... Um, Ca sorry, Councillor Page, can we've got a speaker for the motion. Thank you, Councillor Page. No, Councillor, it's fine. Um, Hand off the microphone, thank you. Um, I'm speaking for in the sense I did ask... Um, uh, when we were, this was being discussed, whether whether this would be advantageous to some projects that have been presented to councillors uh, by a couple of big companies, and uh, have been told yes, I think because of that, that I, I do feel that we should proceed with this. I know we're always asking for money, but I think we should proceed for this. It's a well-written report. Um, these. Uh, proposals that have been sort of discussed, which some of us saw. I hope I hope that it has, has gone out to all councillors to have a look at these from different uh, bodies. Um, we'll be part of all of this and I think that it's the way forward. Thank you. Any speakers against? You're speaking against, Councillor Page? No, not allowed, Councillor. All gators said no comments. Thank you. Um, so no further speakers? I'll put the motion. Oh, Councillor Brown, write a reply. No, Madam Mayor. Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley against Kennedy, Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page. Thank you, Councillors. The motion's carried. Move to item eight, Broken Hill City Council report number eight slash 21, dated February 11th. 2021, page 264, the draft code of practice, closed circuit television system program policy. Move have a mover. Yeah. Councillor McCool. Oh, oh, sorry, Councillor Gallagher, did you say yes? Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Cool, second it. Councillor Gallagher, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. It's just a well uh, play, well, it's going to be the public exhibition for 28 days. It's a well. Um, well written report and, and um, it's achievable and it's uh, a good thing to CCTV. I commend it. Thank you. Speakers against? Yes, Madam Mayor. I, uh, I'd like to ask a question as well. Who intends to view the footage? This is a huge problem. It's been there from day one. The police said they will not uh, be responsible for viewing the footage. So who, who's going to spend all I'll, the hours viewing this footage? I'll ask the uh, acting general manager. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's only reviewed when an incident's reported um, and, and if the police request that council has the capacity to hand it over. Okay. Councillor, are you speaking against the motion? No, hey, Madam Mayor, okay. I'm quite happy with the answer. Okay. Thank you. Um, no further speakers? Okay, Councillor Gallagher, write a reply. No, Madam Mayor. Okay, I'll put the motion, all those in favour? Against declared it carried unanimous. Thank you, everyone. 
item nine, Broken Hill City Council report number nine slash 21, page 278. This is the draft heritage strategy. Do I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Adams, seconder, Councillor Clark. Councillor Adams, would you like to speak to the motion? Is your microphone on, Councillor? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this has been a little while coming, but if you have a look at recommendation one to nine, it really clarifies what the heritage, heritage uh, strategy is all about leading into 20 to 23, and I endorse it. Thank you. Any speakers against? No speakers against. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams against? Mate, madam. Yeah. Councillor Kennedy. Oh. Thank you. Can I make a comment before? No, the debate's <laughs> closed. <laughs> Thank you, councillors. Item 10, Broken Hill City Council report number 10 slash 21, page 295. And this is the draft agency information guide. Do I have a mover for this? Councillor Brown, second Councillor Cool. Councillor Brown, do you want to speak to this? No, no, Madam Mayor. No. Is there any debate? No debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those in favour? It's the unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. It's carried. Item 11, Broken Hill City Council report number 11 slash 11 slash 21. Um, and this is the draft corporate credit card policy on page 324. Do I have a mover for that? I'll move that way. Moved by Councillor Gallagher, second by Councillor Brown. Okay, thank you. Is there any debate? No debate? Oh, Councillor, did you want to speak to the motion? No, uh, I just won, uh, Madam Mayor. It's a well written report. It goes in depth of how to use and the, the, the procedures of a credit card. Um, it goes to show that we're one step above everyone else and uh, we're moving forward in, in that area. And um, I commend the report. Thank you. Speakers against? I'll speak against. Uh, Councillor Orgate. Or I'll move an amendment. What's your amendment? The amendment is that we, we continue to retain one, two, three, and four as they exist but in the policy that we reduce the $10,000 to $4,000, the credit limit. So uh, item five is to reduce the credit limit. No, item, yeah, item five is to reduce the credit limit from $10,000 to, to four or $5,000. The, the reason I do that is from a risk management point of view, an employee, I'm not suggesting that would. I'll second that. An employee can um, could run up ten thousand dollars quite rapidly if they had the wrong intentions, and from a risk management point of, point of view, you know the horse is bolted. Uh, I can't see why uh, why there needs to be a ten thousand such a high limit. Going back to the last council, it was two thousand two thousand dollars. It's now 10,000. What's changed in that time? I don't think a lot has changed. Uh, I'm not sure who the personnel who get all get it, get these cards, uh, and I'm sure the people that they the employees that are given the cards are honest and reliable and trustworthy. But there's always an occasion where, from a risk management you know, perspective, you can run up $10,000 and then scoot pretty quickly. And some people might be encouraged to do that. I don't think it needs to be as high as it is. Could I have a question, Madam Sorry, Mayor. question. Um, Councillor uh, Adams, you're speaking again. No, it was just a question. Question? Just, yeah, question? To, from following on there. Um, does the amount um, of, of credit actually um, be discussed at the audit and risk committee. Um, Mr. Acting General Manager, um, do you want to address the ten thousand dollars versus four and about audit and risk committee and the policy? And then I'll come back to you. 
Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, it was discussed at the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee on Thursday around the credit limit. So yeah, just, just for some clarity, not every single credit card is issued with a $10,000 maximum credit limit. It's, it's, um, it's based on the need. So a lot of staff, we don't actually have a lot of credit cards firstly, but um, supervisors and team leaders that do require them will get issued uh, between two and $3,000. And then some uh, executive leaders will have 5,000. The general manager has 10,000. The reason why the general manager has 10,000 is because the credit cards used for the booking of corporate travel uh, for counsellors and uh, for staff when they go away. And, and at the moment, you know, five people flying to Sydney for a night um, and accommodation, you get up over five or 6,000 pretty quickly. So it just allows the ease of that to occur. Thanks for that. Uh, Madam, Madam Mayor, I'll withdraw my amendment. Uh, it's a pity we weren't told that in the in the report, because uh, I still maintain that ten thousand dollars is is too great. Uh, it probably is not such an issue now that only one person gets the ten thousand dollar card. I would hope that the other cards also are policed quite. Uh, and we should. And as a council, we we come in for so much criticism about hiding things. Some councils report monthly or quarterly the amount of money expended on various credit cards. Why aren't why don't we do the same? Thank you. So the Madam, Madam Mayor, under the local government. Sorry, I just got to deal with Councillor Orgate first. Um, so he's withdrawn the amendment. Um, so we'll accept he's withdrawn the amendment. Um, Councillor Kennedy touched the button first. Councillor Page, you're going to ask a question. Madam Mayor, under the Local Government Act, we as councillors can view the general manager's uh, bank card and costings. Under the general manager, we do not have access to know what... The only one we, we can know what's been spent is the general manager. So. Uh, I think that's been amended in the in the motion in the policy, so that's been amended. Thank you, councillors. Uh, no further debate. Yeah, I'll move an amendment. What's Thanks, your Madam amendment, Mayor. councillor? Uh, one, two, three, four, and that a re and that a report be prepared for the need for the ten thousand dollar credit card, even though it's been outlined here. I think it needs to be written down, and that council will be provided with a quarterly report to be tabled at the council meeting on the expenditure of uh, the $10,000 credit card. Uh, the reason I moved that is because transparency is the most important thing. Uh, if people read the report, there is uh, all through it, Count all, and this related to six counts, had important gaps in their credit card policies, reconciliation processes needed to be enhanced, detection, fraud in all six, three of the six councils lacked senior management oversight of council card use, card holders from all six council advised that they had shared their credit cards with other staff members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the reason I moved that is um, to ensure that the community can be completely happy with what council was doing. Uh, all councillors would know that across the state, uh, there'd been a number of councils that had made the media quite re quite recently as far as general managers um, abuse of power of spending money. Uh, it's not to suggest that uh, our general managers would ever do it, but what it does is it shows a clear, a clear uh, transparency from the council to the community. We as a Broken Hill City Council and the general manager has nothing to hide when it comes to credit card transactions. I'm sure I'm not the only councillor uh, that has people asking questions about credit card use, et cetera. Um, I say that to me, it appears all above board, uh, but at the end of the day, if, the if, there's a, if there's a report quarterly or even six monthly report, the, the community can have complete faith in what how council is administering their, their credit card use. Uh, it alleviates a lot of the things that are written in red in the report where councils, councils uh, have uh, breached their policy or didn't have in their policies a way of uh, monitoring that. Thank you, Madam.
Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Um, you were seconding that, Councillor Allgate? Yes. Okay. Any further debate? Um, a question, please, Madam Mayor. Mr. Councillor um, Norman. In relation to the monthly reconciliation process, um, the general manager's corporate credit card, once reconciled, uh, goes to the chief financial officer for approval. So someone who's below the general manager approves the general manager's expenditure. Um, I was of the understanding that the mayor approved the, um, or could you un, uh, enlighten me as to why that process is how it is? Um, well, it was it, it was debate it was talked about at the audit risk committee, and I raised it that I didn't think it was appropriate that a, a staff member that reports to the general manager um, should actually sign off. And apparently, it'd been done like that for many years. And I asked that it be amended, and so it has been. Um, it's going to be amended that the mayor signs off on the credit card. It still will go through um, a risk management process, but um, that will be the change that goes in. But in the past, it was the chief financial officer and the change will be that the mayor signs off on it. Um, well, that was my understanding, Madam Mayor, which is why I'm asking why it says on page 329, um, under 2.5 monthly reconcil reconciliation process, that it is the um, chief financial officer that approves, not yourself. Uh, Mr. Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, it was, it's basically just given that these papers were issued uh, prior to Audit Risk and Improvement Committee that occurred on Thursday, and, and given that it goes out in 28 days public display, it'll be it's already corrected. It'll go out in 28 days public display with the correction, but it wasn't correct in these papers due to timing. That certainly explains it, and thank you for you, Madam you. Mayor. Question, Councillor. If there was a $10,000 credit card limit, what happens if there's a purchase over $10,000 before it? Um, Mr. Gen Acting General Manager. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, with our procurement policy, we don't allow any purchases to go over $10,000. So we would have to um, issue a, uh, through the normal accounts payable process um, in, in those instances. A question, Madam Chair. Councillor uh, Orgate. Do I understand right that uh, the, the level of uh, the ten thousand dollars will be spelled out for the general manager in this public document, the policy, and lesser amounts for other employees? Uh, Mr. Acting General Manager. Thanks, Madam. We, uh, we, we certainly can, Councillor Orgate. We'll update that and uh, spell it out what level of staff get, um, what amount. Thank you. Um, so we have had a speaker for the amendment, Councillor Kennedy. We've had a lot of questions uh, for clarity. Um, is there any speakers against? Okay, I'll put Councillor Kennedy's amendment. All those in favour? Councillors, uh, Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Kennedy counts as a unanimous vote. Thank you, Councillors. The amendment now becomes a motion. Um, I'll put the motion, all those in favour, declared it carried. Thank you, councillors. We'll now move to item, oh, sorry. Just move a motion, Madam Mayor. Sorry? Just uh, the, noting the time. Oh, is it? We, we're watching the time closely. Uh, we, move the, that we go past nine o'clock, Madam Mayor. I think we have to wait till we get to nine o'clock to move Done. past. Done. So, um, item 12, Broken Hill City Council report number 12 slash 21, the quarterly budget review statement for the period the, ending uh, December 2020, page 408. I'll Do move I have the a report. mover? I'll move <coughs> the second, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Nolan. No. Speakers again. Sorry. Second. Seconded, seconded by Councillor Allgate. And ask some questions. Uh, question, Councillor. Come on, what is that? Question? Is your microphone on, Councillor? No. Thank you. First of all, uh, on page 428, can, it's a simple question. Can I ask what the 482,778 legal fees are in lieu of? Is it more associated with the Civic Centre debacle or 
other things. Uh, Mr. Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, it's majorly related to the Civic Centre litigation. Right. Uh, the second thing is, uh, it's always concerned me in terms of the, um, on page 414, the capital budget grants and contributions or the grants and contributions for operation and also for uh, capital. I mean, historically, uh, back from about the uh, about the start of this term of council, we would average around about four or five million at best in in grants, combined grants. We're now suggesting that um, this year, in 2021, we're going to get 37 million dollars. Now, according to the on on page 414. Uh, according to the, uh, the the chart there, in the first six months of this year, we've got four million dollars in grants. So we've got thirty three million dollars still outstanding to get in the next six months. The question I have is, I always thought it was unrealistic from the start, and I'd be pleasantly surprised if it turned out to be true. But so much is predicated on that thirty seven million. If it doesn't come to being, uh, that's going to be a real disaster. Can I ask the general manager, the mayor, or the general manager, or the accounts, the finance manager, <coughs> how realistic is it that we are going to, we are going to get another thirty-three million dollars in the next six months? Mr. Acting General Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It was yeah, probably a couple of th things there to address. So I'll do them hopefully in order. Uh, firstly, the thirty-three, sorry, yeah, thirty million dollars that we had in the um, projected gr capital grants was based around what we were hoping to get uh, for um, the library precinct. I think we put in, we did put in the original budget that it was fifteen million dollars. Uh, we also put in grant expectations around Queen Elizabeth Park and O'Neill Park precinct, which we were successful for both of them. So that, that figure will increase in the next quarterly budget review, given that they occurred in January, as well as the CBD redevelopment. So, I mean, I'm hoping that we will get the funding for the library precinct and there's $15 million of it straight up. Um, but in the second part of that, we just, what would the impact be? It won't be any impact because we have put these grants in um, based on the based on those projects, if those if we don't get the grants, the projects don't go ahead. Therefore, there's no capital expenditure, so there won't be any financial impact to council. Well, I, I understand. I understand that those uh, projects won't go ahead. Uh, that not necessarily. I don't think that's necessarily the case in uh, operational. But uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. You said you're hoping. What I'm asking is, how realistic are those figures? If they're not realistic, they shouldn't be in the bloody budget to start with. We've gone from, if you look on four on page 429, we've gone from uh, the last couple of years getting about six or seven, between five, six and seven million total in grants. To this year, we're going to we're going to get 37 million in theory, or we're hoping. Uh, and then it goes down to $20 million next year. How you can pinpoint such a, a significant figure 12 months in advance is beyond me. Uh, and then we go back to a more realistic figures from there on in around about seven or eight or sometimes 10. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be any logic to the, to the ability to gain the grants that you're suggesting that we hope we'll get. And if you just hope something, you're going to hope something, uh, you're going to get it. It shouldn't be in the report as far as I'm concerned. It, it, you know, it, when you say it doesn't affect anything, it means that those projects don't go ahead. That's a big effect. It mightn't affect the operation of the council as such, because you just don't do that work. But some in the public understand that, you know, I don't believe there should be a library, but there are others perhaps that do. There, there are others that uh, I, I believe the Sturt Park and some of these other projects, they're, they're, they are good projects. There's no doubt about that. But this pie in the sky business of putting $37 million in, hoping that we'll get it, I, I just, it's misled. 
Mr. Acting General Manager, did you want to make another comment or? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, just, just to clarify, the, the operational grants that we've put in there, 100%, we will get that uh, thereabouts. Um, so around that $6.7 million. And the second part, just again, for clarity around those capital projects that council made a commitment to go ahead with those shovel ready projects. And we used the library for an example, which means it went into our capital budget and then we had, the, we had it grant dependent. So it makes it really clear to the grants and the government that we've council's got their contribution, but we need their contribution. But as soon as we've got it, council's committed to construct it, which is what we need for um, the grant program. Thank you, councillor. I accept that uh, when you say shovel ready, the last time I shuddered when I heard that shovel ready, when Mayor Winston Kai kept telling us that the parklets were shovel ready, there was never a plan, a design, or nobody knew what it was, but everything was shovel ready. None of it went ahead. The money that PHP give us, we, we expended $700,000 and then had to dip into the annual rates income to pay that, to put that 700,000 back to make it the five odd million that BHP give us and sent it back. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting that, I just believe it's very difficult to explain to anybody in the public that we're gonna get that sort of money and that we're going to do those projects. Thank you, Councillor Page, you have a question? Yes, Madam Mayor. In regard to the surveys that have, have been done in regard to the library in Argent Street, what are the findings? Uh, we'll the, take that on notice for, because we're talking about the budgets now. Yeah, well, and, the, people have mentioned the library on many yeah, occasions. We'll take that on notice because okay. we need to um, but are you happy to move a motion to extend our time of our meeting? Because we're about to hit nine o'clock. Yes, Madam Mayor, I'll gladly do that. Okay, moved by Councillor Page. Second, second I'll, I'll second that. But Madam, Madam Mayor, can I just put you on notice that uh, 20 past nine, I'll be leaving. Okay, um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? No, I want to speak against the motion, Madam Mayor. Okay, Councillor. Um, Councillor Page, do you want oh, to no. speak? No, I meant against the original, not the time motion. Thank sorry, you, I'll. Councillor. Yeah, sorry. I thought you were it's all of a sudden moving the motion. Yeah. No, we're just needing time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour? Against declared it carried. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, so we've had Councillor Nolan speak forth. We've had questions asked. Um, Councillor Kennedy, you're going to speak against? Yes, I'll speak against uh, on a similar grounds of even though Councillor Allgate moved or seconded the, the report, I, I as Councillor Allgate has, does have concerns with those amounts that are written in there. To just put it in some sort of perspective, Broken Hill has a population of 18,000. We're talking about each of those people receiving about sixteen or seventeen hundred dollars to equate that across the state. We're talking about ten billion dollars in grants. Now that's not happening. Like all grants, people get a percentage as to their population bases, and they take into account some other things. But to suggest that Broken Hill is going to get so much more than all other population bases is not realistic. We may hope to get $15 million for a library, the equivalent for a town of 800, uh, 180,000 people would be, where's our $150 million? That's the equivalent. And that's why state governments don't do it. We all know state governments don't do it. Federal governments are even worse. They go on population and, and hence the reason uh, so many regional towns and rural towns struggle so much because our population base is not enough to get those uh, grants that are based on population. Uh, so to suggest that it'll be 30 million this year and 13 million next year, uh, the figures can't add up because it means that Broken Hill would be getting significantly more per population than everywhere else in the state. And it's just not going to happen. And I like Councillor Allgate, um, have trouble with figures in there that aren't realistic and can't be backed up with hard facts. It's all we could here tonight move a motion to say we would like a hundred million dollars to do a shovel ready project. 
and put it in our budget because we've said it and it's shovel ready, ready, knowing quite well that the state government is never going to fund it. And I think it's it's remiss of council to put those things. What I'd like to see is when we get or look like getting the grant, getting to the point where the state government is actually uh, dishing that grant out, then we put it in our budgets, not in advance and hope. Thank you, councillor. No further speakers for, no more speakers for. Councillor Nolan, write a reply. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my understanding, and this is just, just to assist with the, the, the grant projection amounts, is that in order to do a project, you've got a budget for it. And then if you don't get the grant, that's fine. You don't do the project and then you try again next year. But on, the, on a bright note, I must say that Cobar, a city or town of just three, three and a half thousand people, got $32 million in the first two rounds of resources for regions. So it might not happen often, but sometimes it does happen. And so I'm hoping that we um, get the money when we want it, but if we don't, we'll try again. So um, I'd like to thank my fellow councillors for a very interesting debate. And um, it goes to show we do read the papers. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion, all those in favour. Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Allgate, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley against, Councillor Kennedy, the motion's carried. We move to item 13. This is report number 13 slash 21, can, can I... page 433, the uh, proposed borrowing for the waste fleet renewal. Do I have a mover? Mover by Councillor Cool, seconder, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Council Cool, do you want to speak to the motion? Madam Mayor, I think it's pretty clear. You got a trouble with your microphone, yes. have you? It's broken. It's, it's pretty clear in the report the cost benefits of going ahead. Councillors Kennedy and Councillor Allgate. Just trying to work out what item we're on, Madam Mayor. Item 13. 13, thank you. I'll just yeah. wait till they're up to you. Got it now? It's right pretty, in front of you. Yeah, it's pretty clear in the report the cost benefits and to the community and council of uh, maintaining our waste <coughs> and ensuring that that service continues. Thank you. Thank you. Speakers again. I'll move an amendment, Madam Mayor. What's your amendment, Councillor? Uh, I'll move an amendment that a report be prepared, to, uh, prepared for Council to be at the March meeting for all expenses and revenue for the last three years for the waste service operations, including revenue for commercial operations and gate charges and fees. Did you, did you get that, Lisa? Oh, yeah. I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Page is seconding that. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's the, I move that I move that uh, because it's quite obvious that there isn't as much money as there should be in the waste services operations. We've been collecting money at the gate, which has been spent wherever. We've been collecting money for bins, green waste bins. Uh, we even got six million dollars for the Wentworth to Broken Hill pipeline, which is going to be used on a library instead of the waste facility. Now there was a cost to the waste facility, but all the income was used to transfer it somewhere else. This is the reason we don't have enough money in waste services is because all money collected from these commercial operations and gate uh, takings is being used for other revenue, but there's also a cost involved in them, like manning the waste bridge, like um, putting all the soil from Wentworth to pipeline, things like that. There's a cost in disposable waste, the council's offsetting all the money that comes in as revenue as profit. That is not acceptable. Now we're talking about borrowing $2 million because council spending money it shouldn't be spending, offsetting waste charges. And I don't know if that money's been sent to service legal fees or whatever, but there is money coming out and it's being moved around we are now borrowing money that we shouldn't have to borrow for a waste service that had plenty of money in reserves that all of a sudden now we've got two, two million and something in reserves I see in the back of the book that's gone up a little bit from what it was before. Uh, 
Council's always had a good amount of money in those waste, waste reserves that are always been able to pay for what was needed out there, including compactors. Everything we've needed, waste services have been able to pay for it. All of a sudden, we're talking about borrowing over $2 million. We're borrowing that money because Council is using revenue raised from commercial operations and gate operations out there as profit as opposed to revenue. We need to take into account the costs that are associated with producing that revenue and stop just taking money out and using it wherever we like. I think it's underhanded and it, it should be a breach of the Local Government Act. And I will, will follow that, I will follow that up to make sure uh, whether council is, is doing the right thing when it comes to transferring revenue <coughs> out of waste services and not claiming any costs and claiming it as policy, as profit. So that's why I asked for a report, because I have no doubt there's been a significant amount of revenue and income generated by the waste dump, and we need to waste services, and we need to see what expenditure there and understand exactly and fully, as a council, why we need to borrow $2 million to get this, these, these, uh, this infrastructure. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kennedy. Your amendment. Just, um, just a question, by... Madam Mayor. Councillor, is Lucan? that is that amendment going on the end of the recommendation? Councillor, no, it's not. It's... I would like that before. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I'd like that before uh, we look at borrowing money or anything else. We need no. to know Sorry. exactly what um, yeah. what needs to happen. So, Councillor Kennedy's amendment is not. Um, not uh, the motion. It is basically saying he wants a report on the expenses and revenue. Can I just uh, ask the general acting general manager, um, waste rep, white funds in the waste reserves, can they be moved? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, no, they can't. With the domestic waste management reserves and external restriction, we count all domestic waste income coming in and all domestic waste expenditure, and that gets updated every month, which is in your investment report and your quarterly report, doesn't get moved around. Uh, commercial waste is an internal restriction, but our council's policy is not to move the commercial waste money around either. So those figures, they don't they don't get shuffled around. It's just income in, expenditure for operating those facilities, and then obviously the closing balance changes each month based on income and expenditure. Third question, Madam Mayor, just in Councillor in Kennedy. relation to the question, there was six million dollars from the Broken Hill to Wentworth pipeline that was moved, certainly moved. So uh, so my my statement was in relation to the six million dollars that was uh, collected from Wentworth, the um, Broken Hill Pipeline, there was an expense in taking that taking that waste out at the facility. So because there is an expense to do that, the whole six million cannot be considered profit. It can only be considered revenue. The, and by council taking the whole six million dollars and moving it is doing exactly what I said. And that was voted on by council. You were asking about moving fundings around. Yeah, that is, uh, Madam Mayor, that is moving funding. No, no, that, no. That's I'm why just, I'm I just saying for... that was voted on by council. What you're asking is that can, you're asking that the staff are moving money around. No, no, I'm saying all the money that's been generated from the waste services over the th last three years, including commercial like the pipe, uh, pipeline and all that sort of stuff, all, all income to do with the operations of the waste services over the last three years and all expenses. Then what we have less left will know what the, so if the costs are for that example over that period was this, and then they're moving that money. Why, why are we having to borrow money for the operations? All I want is to see what's spent there, uh, what was made at the dump and what was spent up at the dump over the last three years. Councillors, any speakers against? No speakers against. Councillor, are you speaking against the motion? I'd just like to ask a question. It's What's a valid the question, question. Councillor? To the general manager. What... Acting general manager. Oh, sorry, sorry, acting Mr. GM. In regard to the what cost did council or what cost did the, uh, uh, the rubbish dump incur in regard to the pipeline? It, it, was it just a small figure or large figure or? Um, Mr. Did, did Acting the, General Manager, did the uh, rubbish dump 
have to incur quite a loss for the pipeline? Just just a rough figure. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd hesitate to give a rough figure, but it was. Okay. I mean, we did. We the costs were minimised with the way it was handled, but yeah, there's certainly a cost. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further debate, I'll put Councillor Kennedy's amendment. You need a seconder. Oh, Councillor Page seconded it. Oh, Councillor uh, Lisa. Yes, Councillor Madam Page Mayor, I did second the yeah. motion. So thank you. Um, I'll put Councillor Kennedy's amendment. All those in favour? Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page, against. Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley. The amendment is lost. We now go back to the motion and the motion um, is, is as is. Um, we'll continue. Um, there's no further debate. Councillor Cool, would you like a right of reply? Why, why, no? why is there no further why is there no further? No, I said, is there no further debate? I, I just, um, I, I just find it hard to accept that in the in the term of this council, we we've borrowed twenty million dollars already in 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 uh, addition to what debts we had before. Now we're borrowing another two million. We're currently operating uh, have an operation operating deficit of about two and a half million. Where's it all going to end? You talk about balancing the books. We're getting deeper in the red all the time, deep, deeper and deeper. You know, to, it seems as if to borrow 22 million, it's like water off a duck's back. We've got to pay it back. We've got to pay interest, and I see it all written. But where do we? Where's it going to end? I can't believe that. So. The two million dollars can just be, yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. As Councillor Kennedy said, going back twelve or six or twelve months ago, we had sufficient in reserves, as far as I'm concerned, we had sufficient in waste res waste services reserves to pay much more than two million dollars for fleet. But it's gone all of a sudden, in addition to the six and a half million from the pipeline authority. And Councillor Nolan said about uh, the grants and that. We've already spent two and a half million dollars on the library and there's no guarantee it's going to go ahead. You know, this, this, this money just seems to be insignificant. Two million dollars. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll borrow another two million. I, I just, it's, it's lunacy. Thank you, Councillor. Um, is there any further debate? <coughs> No further debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley, against. Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Orgate, Councillor Page. Thank you. The motion's carried. <coughs> Move to item 14, report number 14 slash 21, page 442, the investment report for December. Do I have a mover? Do I have a mover, so Councillor Cool? Second. Seconder, Councillor Nolan. Debate? Any debate? No debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Declared it carried. Unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Item 15, uh, Broken Hill City Council report number 15 slash 21, uh, dated February 11th, 2021, uh, page 455, the Broken Hill City Council report. Uh, investment report for January 2021. So I move, have a Madam move. Mayor. Councillor Nolan, seconder. Councillor Clark. Uh, is there any, do you want to speak to that, Councillor Nolan? Oh, just briefly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, unsurprising. Um, things are turning very slowly. Um, who knows where it ends as far as investments go, but at least we're not in the pickle that the country was a year ago. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Oh, sorry. Um, is there any further debate? Speakers against? I'll put the motion, all those in favour? The unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. We'll move to item 16, uh, investment strategy report and portfolio review 
for 2020, page 468. Um, do I have a mover? Madam Mayor, I'd be excused. Yes, Councillor. Well, no, Councillor Allgate, leaving the Council Chambers. Do I have a mover? Yes, Councillor Clark, second Councillor Lacool. Do you want to speak to that, Councillor Clark? Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I think that this report does cover um, what's going on um, both in the world and in Australia at the moment. And I think that uh, if we are following uh, the news, uh, even at a basic level, uh, we would quite understand this report. Thank you. Thank you. Any speakers against? No speakers against. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against? I'll just go through the call. Councillor Nolan, Can sorry, all those in favour? Councillor Nolan, Councillor Brown, Councillor Clark, Councillor Cool, Councillor Page, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Adams, Mayor Turley against, Councillor Kennedy, the motion's carried. Item 17, Broken Hill City Council report number 17 slash 21. Uh, this is the disposal of surplus equipment. Do I have a move? Move that way, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Adams, seconder. Councillor Nolan. Councillor Adams, do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, it's fine, thanks. Thank you. Is there any debate? No debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? A unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. Item 18, uh, the Volunteer Heritage Walk Tour Donations. Move that Report way, number 18 slash 21. Uh, moved by Councillor Adams. Seconded by Councillor Nolan. Councillor, do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. I've moved it with uh, hopefully the understanding that uh, number C has been altered. The Bishop Fox Memorial Mill Centre belongs to St Vincent de Paul, not the lifeline. And uh, just to say, I think this is a, a very generous thing for them to do. And as we are, we're all very pleased that our heritage walk tours will begin in March. Thank you, Councillor, and it has been amended. So I'll put the motion, Madam all Mayor, those in, sorry? Madam Mayor, can we assume that an appropriate thank you will be expressed to this group? Yes, absolutely. Why don't we give them a round of clap for all the work they do? So. Madam, Madam Mayor, can I say a thank you to uh, Deputy Mayor in regard, and that's what I was about to say earlier when I wasn't allowed to, that we should, we should, we, we need to thank the Deputy Mayor for her hard work and dedication to the history and heritage of Broken Hill. So thank you, Deputy Mayor, it is appreciated. And I, you, I'd, I'd like those words documented. Thank you. Um, we'll put, no debate, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, it's a unanimous vote. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll move to item 19. This is report 19 slash 21, local traffic committee report, 14th of December, page 506, and meeting of the 2nd of February. Moved by Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Adams. Speakers against? No speakers against. I'll put the motion, all those in favour. Unanimous vote. Thank you, councillors. We'll move to item Could 20. I just, um, sorry, Madam Mayor. Uh, could I just ask a question through you to Councillor Brown about a traffic matter? Um, we've already put the vote, so can stay after the meeting. And oh, I could just um, ask it in questions uh, for next meeting. It was, it's just we'll, about we'll grab passing. it in the next yeah. meeting question yeah. then. Yeah. Thank you. Um, item 20, Broken Hill City Council report, number 20 slash 21. This is the action list report. Moved by Councillor Adams. Seconder, uh, Councillor Cool. Just a question on that one, Madam Mayor. Yep, I'll just check, Councillor Adams. Do you want to speak to it? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. Councillor uh, Kennedy. I thought Councillor Adams would have done Councillor Nolan's job then and talked about green and Councillor green, Kennedy. lots of green and all that sort of stuff in there. No. Uh, I will. There's lots of green. That's good. No. What's your question, Councillor the question, Kennedy? Uh, we moved. I think it was in. December about a letter to the um, Alice Springs about the toxic waste. Yeah, any, I did contact them. Any 
replies? Um, I had a meeting with them. So I had a meeting with both. Um, we wrote to them. We organised a meeting with two sites. Um, so the Alice Springs site isn't progressing. And then the, the site in Western Australia has been completed. But at that stage that I spoke to them, they hadn't received the EPA licence. So they're not progressing at this stage. Um, so, um, but the other one is completed in Western, in Western Australia. Um, so no further questions. I'll put the action list uh, motion. All those in favour, uh, declared it carried unanimous. We move to committee reports. Um, moves one, two and three in Sierra Adam. Okay, I'll second that. Councillor Nolan, second I'll by Councillor Adams. Is there any debate? No debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Declared it. Sorry, all those in favour? Declared it carried unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Questions taken on notice from the previous council meeting. Do uh, I have a so, mover? So moved, Madam Mayor. Councillor Nolan, seconder. Councillor Clark, debate, no debate. I'll put the motion, all those in favour, declared that carried unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Question for next meeting arising from items on the minutes. Councillor Kennedy, you had one? Yeah, I've got a couple. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one through the chair to Councillor Brown. Uh, this is something I'd say you'd be able to answer is some of the school, school bus zones only uh, Friday, not all day. So a few of the bus, at the central school example, uh, most of the schools have um, the bus zones, bus zones from 8.30 to 9.30. The central school one is only a bus zone from 12 to 3.30 on Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And you have a question? Um, yeah, just another one. Uh, so this was from, and, it's to do with the Civic Centre. Uh, bookings online, a lot of people are having trouble with booking shows for the Civic Centre online. If you could just look at some way of um, improving that for people or for the next meeting, some, yep. some, uh, something like that. Okay. Um, I have one, uh, Mr Acting General Manager. The cat dissexing program that we endorsed at the uh, budget, when does that, uh, the question will be, when is that going to start? Thank you. Um, no further questions for the next meeting? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councillor. Um, it's in regards to the interesting part of Wigman in the Street in the Green. Can Council approach the Director to see if there's any good program that can be implemented again and whether Council can support? I think that discussion is happening, so we'll take that question on notice. Thank you, Councillor. No further questions on notice. Thank you, Councillors. We move into confidential. We'll need to call for a motion to go in a closed session. Can I, Councillor Clark, Councillor Page? I'll put the motion, all those in favour. The unanimous vote. Thank you, Councillors. Um, We'll wait till Jay turns off the YouTube and we'll ask our guests to step out.